Ah, blah, okay. Hello, chat. Hello, hello. My goodness. Okay, we are finally back into this. Um, Alright, we're going to be doing Flight Sim. And I'm not too sure where we're going to take off and land. Um, we are going to be using the A320neo. Hmm. Should we do an American flight? We could do uh, to Alaska, maybe. Yeah, why not? Let's go from... Yeah, let's go from Seattle. So we'll just use uh, Tacoma International. So let's do, yeah, let's just do whatever. We'll do this parking. All right, so that is the departure. So we're gonna go from Seattle all the way up to Anchorage, Alaska. Okay, and do I have an ILS setting? I would really like that. How do I do the ILS setup from here? Hello. I forget how to do the setup for the ILS approach. Um, select arrival. Yeah, Anchorage. Right. Right, so Anchorage, we want this one. Runway 25 left, but how does it do the ILS? Do I actually like the Toyota Century? Yeah, it's my dream car. I don't have money to afford one though, so... Oh well. Am I able to, you know, set an ILS approach? How do I do that? <laughs> uh, where are we flying to? We're going to be flying to Alaska from Seattle. But I need to look up how to set up an ILS. How to set up... ILS approach. Yes. <laughs> Have to do a tutorial.
hmm. I'm trying to figure it out. Hold on. I should be able to figure it out pretty quickly. Who knows? Um, it is 10.36 p.m. where I'm at. I'm on the east coast of America. Also, hello, Fairy. Thank you very much for dropping by. I really appreciate it. And thank you, Phoenix, for dropping by, like always. I appreciate it. And also, I see you, Lude Rabbit. Thank you for dropping by. I'm just trying to figure out how to do this stuff. Okay. Um, I'll just watch this video while we're in the air. It's going to be a long while anyways. So, let's change the time so we're not flying in the night the entire time. We don't want that. So, we're going to do... Maybe something like right here. Alright. And clouds... We can have scattered clouds, that's fine. All right, live traffic, all players. There we go. So we're gonna see everybody else as well. All right. Long wheelbase. Uh, yeah, I like the limousine one. The long wheelbase. Um, we are gonna be flying from KC, KSEA, which is Seattle, to PANC, which is Anchorage. Alrighty. Should we get a different skin on this, maybe? We can get this one on it. Let's see. World travel. No, yeah, might as well. Alright. Let's make sure that we... Customization, yeah, here we go. Tail number, what's an accurate tail number? do in 420 <laughs> and then uh, MY call sign let's see I know there's specific ones So yeah, we should just do a uh, Airbus. Air 
Airbus. Okay, AIB. And then we'll do uh, 3026. Why not? Alright, there we go. Alright, we are ready. Thank you very much, Elm, for the uh, subscription with Prime. I really appreciate it. Also, hello, Elf. Thank you very much for dropping by. I really appreciate it. All right, let's get right into it. We're going from Seattle to Anchorage. So this is gonna be a long flight. We're gonna be in it. Uh, it's real time, so it's gonna be like two hours. So we're gonna be chilling out and having a good time. I think we might do two different flights tonight. We'll see. Seattle Tower AIV tree 026 at runway 16 left ready for departure south departure. All right, it just put us straight in. We are ready for departure. Uh, it didn't let us taxi, so I guess it's too busy. I guess the gates are filled up, so we're just gonna depart directly. All right, we are ready. Do our pre-flight checks. Looks like everything should be good. Seat belts. Taxi lights on takeoff. All right, all the lights are good. All right, we're ready. All right, let's go. We are taking off. So as soon as we get up in the air, I'm gonna need to turn us around because we are in the wrong heading. That is fine though. V1, rotate. Gear up. Over speed, over speed. AIB tree 026, continue for self departure. AIB tree 026, leading my airspace frequency change approved. Seattle Tower AIB tree 026 frequency change. All right, we are turning. We are not going to tune in the Seattle approach. We're not approaching on Seattle, so we are going to turn. We're gonna keep the power as we make this turn here. And then once we get higher enough, I'll just put on the autopilot and we can start climbing. All right, turn is good. We are still ascending. We're not losing too much speed. We can start leveling a little bit. So yeah, we can see this uh, green line right here. We're gonna follow that. Boeing 747 discontinued in 22, 2020, yeah. All right, we are ready to use the autopilot. We are going to keep a climb of about 1,000 feet per, per minute. All right, we want to select an altitude of 36,500. We'll just set 36,000, that's fine. Seattle Tower, Alaska, 223, ready for departure runway, 16 left IFR to Fairbanks. Alaska 223, altimeter 29er, decimal minor, 21255 at five. Caution the generic taking off runway, 16 center. Cleared for takeoff runway, 16 left. 
All right, we're setting 320 as our heading, and we are going to keep a speed of 240 knots, and we'll... Actually, we can bring that up quite a bit, actually. We'll bring that up to around 270. All right, we should be good. Tune Seattle Center. We're fine. Seattle Center AIB 3026 is tight Airbus A20 and 3 miles east of 2 Sierra 113,500 feet. Request flight following. AIB 3026, Seattle Center. Squawk 5552. Squawk 5552 AIB3026. AIB3026 three three six radar contact, 3 miles north of 2, Sierra 114,000 feet. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 2. Roger AIB3026. Seattle Center AIB 30266 miles north of 2 Sierra 1 request IFR to Anchorage ready to copy. AIB 3026 is cleared to Anchorage Airport as filed. Squawk 5552. Over speed. Over speed. Over speed. Over speed. Over speed. That's good. We're going to pull back the throttle. There we go. AIB 3026 cleared to Anchorage Airport is filed. Squawk 5552. There we go. We are ready to go, chat. AIB 3026 is right correct. Here. Radar contact 15,000 feet. Altimeter 29 or decimal 9 or 2. Turn left, heading 305. Resume own navigation. Descend and maintain 10,000 feet. Turn left, heading 305, resume own navigation, descend, and maintain 10,000 feet, AIB 3026. Alright, we're doing good. We are good. Alrighty. Pretty chill, chat. Pretty chill. We are now cruising. We're having a grand old time. Look at that. We took off at night. Um, I definitely want it to be a little better. So yeah, it's real AIB time. Tree zero two six. Set it Please right expedite here. your descent one zero thousand feet. We're going down the 10,000 feet. Drinking in the back. Yeah. Speaking of, I should really take off the seatbelt sign. If I could find it. There we go. Yeah, the clouds are ridiculously beautiful in this game. AIB tree 026, contact Seattle Center on 125.1. Good day. 125.1 for AIB tree 026. Seattle Center AIB tree 026 is at 13,400 feet, descending 10,000 feet. AIB tree 026, Seattle Center altimeter. God, this game is ridiculously realistic. <laughs> Alright, 
So we're using IFR, so they're gonna bring us all the way to Anchorage using just the waypoints and all that. And we'll follow them in. So yeah, we're gonna continue our heading of 305. Did they tell us to go 305? I feel like that's a little, little right of the uh, vector. I guess it's 305, yeah. Alright, we'll just follow them. And if we end up off the path, then it's their fault. <laughs> Alright. Beverage of choice today is Pepsi Zero Sugar. Pretty epic. Mm -mm -mm. Here, I'm gonna move this map right here. All right, we're getting the 10K, and now we're gonna hold this altitude. So we are underneath the top clouds right here, and we are just cruising along. They'll probably increase this cruising ceiling as we go along, but until now, we're just sticking down to right here. Probably for this traffic that's right here. We don't wanna intercept this traffic. Alrighty. Hello there, Ninja. Thank you for dropping by. We're doing a flight from Seattle to Anchorage, Alaska. That's going to be a pretty long flight, but it's going to be pretty chill. Mm -mm 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 -mm. This game is beautiful. This is a different player. So this is a whole different player. So you actually get to see the ATC between other players and the tower. It's really realistic. <laughs> it's really fun. Alrighty. Thank you all very much for dropping by. I really appreciate it. I got a lollipop. Amazing. I grabbed one from work. Lollipops. Is there autopilot? Yeah, we're using it. I'm not using any of the controls right now. It's keeping us at 10,000 at a speed of 270 knots at a heading of 305. We can actually increase the speed a bit. We can go up to 300. There we go. <laughs> Very nice. They don't have a set speed or anything, so I guess we can go as fast as we want. Oh, this game is beautiful. The amount of detail in here as well is crazy. 
Like, we have everything laid out in here. Just cruising along, having a good time. Should I put some trash taste on? I bet we can. Let's see here. I'm gonna put on some trash taste. We're gonna listen to a podcast while we go on our way. Since we don't have anything else to do. Mm-mm-mm. Trash, trash taste time. Oh, yeah. All right. Um, give me this window capture, please. Vancouver Center, generic November eight four zero Juliet Mike is passing thirteen thousand feet, climbing flight level two two zero. Generic November eight four zero Juliet Mike Vancouver Center altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two continue as planned. All right, let me move this. All right, that's good. And I'll move the map and just do this real quick. Or maybe I should just put it right here. Like so, there we go. Mm-mm-mm. Ladies and gentlemen, you have exactly two weeks left to get your hands on this wonderful trash taste drip, merch. Drip, and let drip, me tell you, you drip, don't want to be drip, missing out on drip. this one. We heard no, why how are you many saying of you... the word drip over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> we know how many of you missed out on the last trash taste merch. I mean uh -huh. drip. So why not get it this time around? We got t-shirts, sweaters as well. You don't want to miss out on this. Go get it right now. Link in the description because they're never coming back after this. I said to Apari, I refuse to do more <laughs> merch drops unless there's anime girls on them. And you know what? They came through. Woo! They, they came, came through. through. So what are you waiting for? Smash that link in the description down below right now to get your trash taste merch before it's gone. Joey, there is an unsolved Rubik's Cube right here. I'm salivating at the mouth just looking at that. I'm gonna mix up this Rubik's Cube right in front of Joey <laughs> and I'm gonna leave it here no! for the entire podcast. <laughs> I'm not distracted by that because I'm too busy admiring our sick new merch. Is this the segue? The stitching. The stitching. No, this is not the segue. I'm just saying that you guys should just grab some right now. Oh, like shit. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, Wait, where can you get it? Um, well, okay. this isn't an ad. I would, but holy an shit, it's expensive. This is an organic advertisement that we have done because I like the merch. <laughs> Can't, I can't wait to wear our merch. You know, do, you know, oh. do you know why I'm glad we're doing a new merch drop? Um, so Connor has more than one shirt you can finally <laughs> wear. <laughs> I do need to wear more. I gotta wear, I gotta wear more shirts. All right, that's how it is. Yeah, because uh, you know, I, I don't know if you guys know, I guess we're welcome to Trash Taste. This <laughs> is, uh, like, <laughs> wait, are we starting? I, 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 I was gonna like just jump right into it because I had something to say, but so, yeah. So the big hello, like, hello, welcome to Trash Taste. Yeah. I'm your host for today, Garden. With me are the boys, whatever, whatever. But, <laughs> so, 
<laughs> this is what happens 120 episodes in. <laughs> yeah. We just don't give a fuck. We're like, you know how it goes. It's, it's begun. I, I thought we were going to do like a fucking, you know, a little, little banter for the intro, but then I was just like, you know, I, I have a, I have a, like a segue to jump on now that we're talking about this. <laughs> um, so Connor has like, everyone thinks it's a meme, but Connor... Or you know, like trap like your previous high trap station. Every every show, aside from what, right? Yeah. How the fuck do you do that? How the fuck do you get away with that? Five, How many shirts you pack? Or uh, uh, three of them. So I was just like through them. Uh, them in sight. Did you know every single show had? Uh, well, most of them had laundry. Yeah. yeah. So I just did my laundry, even if I had like two two items, I would just throw it in. Was it wasn't wasteful. Then yeah, probably, but. I kept it clean, and that's honestly worth it. Every time I looked over at you, it felt like Groundhog Day. Yeah, it, it felt like, like it. This is yeah. like, I'm like, what? Air Canada. So I still day one of the tour. I didn't do every shirt. I thought, nah, I'm not going to do that. And then yeah. the second shirt, I didn't wear it. And then after I was like, ah, oh, fuck, I can't Really? I yeah. didn't notice. <laughs> do, you know, yeah. do, you know, do you know what I found funny is yeah. that, you know, we had like the, our tour staff members with us and everyone, everything like that. And they didn't realize you had packed multiple shirts until yeah. like two weeks in. And yeah. I remember someone on the staff member just awkwardly asking, when was the last time you washed that shirt? <laughs> I just thought Connor was like a filthy animal. Yeah, he He's thought, never washed his shirt. They thought I was wearing the same shirt the entire tour. And I was like, um, well, that would be gross. Yeah. And no, I had three and I just washed them a lot because they're very good quality and they could withstand washing. Okay, it, it just makes me want to just take you out on a day to Tokyo to just like dress you up. Well, you're like, just take like, me out and put me down. Oh, just, 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 just get rid of him. Just get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I need more clothes that are good. I just, yeah. it's, it's tough. It's Can you tough. let me for me? Yeah, sure. I'm, I, I actually like. This sounds like a Joey channel video. It, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, as as someone who clothes, owns yeah. a clothing brand, I want to take you out and give you some nice clothes. Okay. Yeah, I feel yeah. like you need it. Yeah, here's a, here's a question. How many times do you guys buy new clothes? Mm. And when do you guys make the decision to like bin? Like, when do you make the decision to bin old clothes? Because I'm not one to hold on to old clothes. Right. I pretty much get rid of them. I feel like I'm nah. obviously not wearing this anymore. Mm. It yeah. just goes in the trash. Yeah, for my my rule of thumb is if I don't wear it for at least a month or so, yeah, then that probably means I'm not gonna wear it for the rest of the. How year. wasteful of us, yeah. right, gentlemen? Um, but so but bad. I donate all my clothes. So. Oh, okay. okay. I don't, I don't I'm anything. the complete opposite. <laughs> 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 I I have you wasteful <gasps> fuck. No 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 no. It's, as in I have an issue. I can imagine I, your wardrobe. I am a fucked. clothes hoarder. Okay. <laughs> oh, I I am a cl I am that guy who. You open up the wardrobe, right? So I remember at my old at my old place, my wardrobe was completely full, yeah. right? And so I moved into this new place like last year, and it's great because I have a wardrobe, but I also have like a second storage room mm. yeah. that also has like a clothing rail. I'm like, great. Then I Uber finally have AID more space for more clothes. <laughs> it's like I'm like a year into living in this new place, I'm like, fuck. Both wardrobes You've are full now. <laughs> Bro, I, I don't even, I try and have my t-shirts not even take up half, like okay. a small wardrobe. Actually, I, ha I, have, I have a fucking confession to make. Uh -huh. Okay, so you see I've, you see me wear this belt, right? Quite, <laughs> quite a lot belt. of times, okay, yeah. yeah. It's nice. a nice belt, right? Yeah. I've owned this since I was 17 zero, years zero, old. I am, I, I am not joking. This belt has How lasted. How has that lasted? Well, it's lasted me. Wait, let me let me calculate. I bought it when I was seventeen. Bro, my belt. I'm thirty two now. It's this this is a fifteen year old belt, and it's still it's still like it still holds up. You I know what? Think. You know what's which fucked is why up? I've never, which is why I've never thrown it away. You what? know what's fucked up? What? I also have a belt I've had since I was seventeen. Are you serious? <laughs> I, I, okay, I think this is because you guys have no no discernible ass cheeks that are large. Because bro, my belts last a year mm -hmm. tops before they're fucked. Really? The, it, it's bro. Mm -hmm. It's like my belts are like Atlas, bro. They're holding it up and then like it just can only last a year i swear to god i i don't know if i'm buying shit belts i i, I, I was i thought this was the problem so yeah I like, oh, i'll buy some nice belts yeah so yeah. i started going up in the in the belt echelon yeah um, and i started getting nicer belts. Belt <laughs> so i i got a belt that was like what i thought was expensive it was like a hundred dollar belt and i was yeah. like that's fucking expensive for a fucking but i guess yeah. if, it, if you're looking for it to last long time mm, it's not yeah, yeah. dude this shit lasted like six months it's fucked what are you doing to it I, I, I'm not, I don't think I'm doing it particularly tight, just tighter than how it would look 
my pants are without a belt, right? So right, I don't know what's going right. on. Am I, am I, when my belt game is off, maybe I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> Your belt game is off. Maybe you're just too fucking dummy I think my ass cheeks are just too big. <laughs> like, I think this is the, the circumference is too much to handle for Connor's belt, uh, Connor's ass, the destroyer of well, belts. It's, man. it's the shearing force, right? Yeah. Because it's an angled force. It's out, you know, it's, it's not meant to handle it. I also, uh, you said you donate your clothes, bro. Yeah. I, Bro, if I try to donate my clothes, they'd be like, what a, what a fuck are all these sweat patches, bro? How do you, <laughs> they'd be like, take this back. <laughs> I think I, I do the, because in Japan, right, they have, they have a lot of, they have a thing called, uh, like, recycle the plastic. Yeah. Yes. Now, when you think about that, you're like, oh, they must be reusing this plastic. No, 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 recycling the plastic also contains burning. Yes. Yes. That yeah, also yes. means recycling. Yes. Yeah. So maybe that's how, how my clothes are being recycled. <laughs> just thrown into a fire. Bro, the amount of odor into them, you, you, you put a flame to them, it's boom. <laughs> Genuinely, I, I wear my most of my shirts to the point where like, I don't, like I, I'm pretty sure I couldn't even donate half of them. So they're so fucked. Wait, do you 100% wait, do you? my boxes, bro. The moment I, I, I'm that kind of guy who's like whole, I'm like one whole, Copium, it's still good enough. It's still mm. good enough. And then it's no, the point where I'm holding your boxes. No, that's tiny that. hole, tiny hole, tiny hole. And then I'm like, it's it's still good. She's fine. She's sturdy. And then literally yeah. like two weeks later, it's like fucked. And you're like, my lip, my literally my entire dick is out. My, like, yeah, I, my, I my, throw this my limit is like, can I pass my fist through it? I should probably, I should probably throw it out. That's your limit. No, no. I think a, finger, a whole no. finger that you can fit through comfortably, it's gonna go. Oh no, I've had some. I mean, we talked about it in a past podcast episode, but like, I've had boxes that have like holes like this big, and I'm just like, yeah, it's still good. It's I, still good. I do take. I, I actually find joy in throwing out clothes or getting rid of clothes. Okay. Yeah. So I feel like it's a new level in my life. See, I, no, no, I, ju I, I just that. find, I, I just like, I should, I, I should throw away clothes, but I look at some clothes, I'm like, oh, maybe I could still make this work. And I just, I, so I That's find- That's how I get you, bro. <laughs> so it's, the, I have like a tier list just system, right? Something. Of just like current clothes I'm wearing, yeah. clothes that I maybe wanna, you know, maybe wanna try again. And then clothes that I've like worn once and I'm like tr trying to look for like a nice occasion to wear <laughs> this clothes. And that's like, I, it just keeps fucking building up. And I'm yeah. like, what is, I don't know what the normal like, level of when you decide to throw away your clothes because mm. i'm gonna be honest for most for most of my life the person who threw away my clothes was my mum. Oh. And, and, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and that was because she was like gun you've not worn these clothes for three fucking years yeah. i'm throwing it out for you and the thing is she would have to do it when I was away from home because she knew if she asked, I would like no, fight her on it. There's some sentimental value to this <laughs> random shirt I bought. Do you, do, you, do you hoard other stuff or is it just no, clothes? No, just clothes. Just clothes, because uh, here's the thing. I don't have like, do you, do you guys buy new clothes regularly as well? No. Because I, I, like, okay, here's the weirdest Half thing, Half right? my wardrobe is like yeah. a party who's just giving me stuff. Like, wow. Yeah, here's the weirdest that thing. I, I remember when I was in England and I was applying for a credit card or something like that. Mm. And they had to like give you, they, you had to give them like a, like a breakdown of your expenses like every month, right? Yeah. And so you have to tell them, you know, how much you spend on like uh, approximation on how much you spend on food, travel, etc. Mm -hmm. And one of the categories was clothes. Yeah. Now, I, and I remember thinking when I was applying for this credit card, uh, when I was like 18 or something, it's like, why is clothes a monthly expense? Is is it normal to buy clothes and like a new piece of clothing every month? Because for me, it's definitely not. <laughs> so right. I was like, what is the, what is the normal schedule? for buying new clothes for other people because for me yeah, it's, it's just other people who buy a lot of clothes yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, like yeah. some some people just you know buy a new thing of clothes every week if they want to and they're just like yeah i'll probably eventually wear it one of these days and then they become hoarders like you <laughs> so, I, I remember uh, like when i was kids um, you know like uh what is it the learning channel tlc yeah like obviously this is that type of reality tv show has been around for a while yeah and the uk had this kind of stuff that, years ago as well. Wait, do you mean PBS? Uh, no, 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 the learning channel, which is the, not, very much not about learning. It's literally oh. about like the My Strange Addiction. Oh, that's, oh, the, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. the learning channel. That's the learning channel? Yeah. TLC? That's, that's what it stands for. The learning channel. Are you serious? I thought it stood for tender loving care. That's, I don't know why. <laughs> no, 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 I don't, I don't know about that. Are you serious? serious? Can we fact check this? I'm pretty sure it's the learning channel. Um, Are you serious? Yeah, so that's, how is so, my strange you learn. addiction learning yeah, about and anything? all those shitty reality, like yeah. Nancy Day Fiance yeah. is, a is on the learning channel. Get lost. What the fuck? <laughs> what is that <laughs> about that? I'm pretty that sure. That perhaps you Britain. shouldn't uh, wife someone after 90 yeah. days. That's a, that's um, a lesson learned. It's an education on what not to do in your life. <laughs> 
I gotta make sure I'm right. I'm yeah. sure that's what it is. It's actually both. Oh, it's both. Oh. Oh, it's Tender Loving Care and the Learning Channel? Okay, well, Come I mean- Come on, TLC, yeah, pick one. So, so the point being is that I, I distinctly remember when I was like 15, I had this very vague memory of mm. one of these types of shows being on where it was like, my strange addiction kind of vibe, but like, I don't know if it's real. I eat my clothes. <laughs> so there's this one guy, he was like, like the most British Northern man ever. He's like, yeah. man, I just, I just have to, I have to throw away my boxes after I've worn them. I just can't wear, rewear a pair of boxes. I just what, refuse. Like one time use. One yeah. time what? use. <laughs> <laughs> they would just film shots of him going into his car and just opening up new pairs of boxes. But, oh yeah, it's good to have a, a fresh batch. <laughs> it's just like, what is this? What the fuck is this? He's the reason why there's a o there's a hole in the ozone layer. Because the, the amount of clothes no, he must be that. like we throwing away and burning and shit. Oh my fucking God. We fixed the ozone layer. That's, yeah, we fixed yeah. it. Yeah. We, we had that, that was an easy fix. We, everything else has not been good. That was, that was what, what, like a rare earth W that but we the, did for the earth. But here's the thing, here's the thing, here's the thing, right? Is that I, I remember as well on this channel, he was like, yeah, it's, it's ruining my life. Uh, my financials are terrible. Yeah, what, I can't afford shit. anything because I'm spending. And he, of course, of course, he didn't buy like the family pack Costco dirt yeah, right. cheap. He was like, yeah. I need Calvin Hello. Klein's oh every God. single I day. Did he also have a thousand print counters on? Yeah. <laughs> so he was buying, he was spending like 20 quid on a pair of boxes yeah. every single day. And he had a jet, like just a normal ass like yeah. salary. There was nothing great. And he was just like, I just, it's just too dirty. The yeah. thought of rewearing a pair of boxes is, uh, uh, disgusting. Okay. But, but he's wearing the same t-shirt, pants, socks. Yeah, yeah. I was he's about to say, yeah, like, them. is he doing it with socks as well? Yeah, yeah. He was re-wearing everything except for boxes. He just felt like it was dirty. I feel like that's that's some weird trauma. That's, How yeah. dirty that's, is this? That's literally the meme of, please, can you help me uh, manage my expenses? Food, $200. Rent, $800. <laughs> boxes, 3,200 boxes. It's, it's all, all these TV shows are like this. They'll be like, they'll be like, Man, this family is having financial difficulties. Yeah. We brought in a financial expert to sort it out. And I'll be like, all right, so yeah, rent. All right, uh, yeah, well, water, all right, food. All right, so we have $900 on a hot tub annual subscription. All right, so it's like a, the, the financial expert has figured out what is going wrong. It's like, I hold on. Not gonna lie. Yeah. We did not need a financial expert. Yeah. I would have done the it's job. It's just yeah. like half the price. Just like buy less boxes. No. <laughs> it's it's like, I've tried that. Yeah. <laughs> every 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 single UK financial thing, it was like 90% of the time it was like, stop ordering takeout food. <laughs> it was literally it. it was literally, and it was like, wow, problem solved. Wow, thanks, Dr. K. We we have all our money fixed. Wow, we're we're wealthy now. And it's like, what the fuck? What is this? <laughs> I'm just, I'm just convinced that like the majority of these like, you know, TLC based like families and stuff like that, that you see on like My Strange Addiction or whatever, they're not real family. I'm yeah. pretty sure. I'm just like, they, they have to be scripted. What I want to know oh, is, yeah. what I want to know, what I want to what, what I know is like with these reality TV shows where yeah. they take this struggling something, a struggling mm. business or a person struggling with issues, they mm. fix the issue on the program. How many times do you reckon it just sticks? Like, well, <laughs> they relapse after day one. Yeah. Well, <laughs> luckily, luckily we have an amazing example and the only way that we can definitively track it is something like Kitchen Nightmares. Yeah. Where we can actually just yeah. see which restaurants are open still. That's true. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. most of them are not open still. If you go yeah. through the Kitchen Nightmares restaurant list, it's so depressing. Pull yeah. out on your phone, like Kitchen Nightmare restaurants that have closed. Fuck, it's, it's literally like entire seasons. Jeez. All the restaurants have closed. Like it's like fucked. It's like, okay, Jesus. well. Gordon couldn't help that much. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as if maybe bad ownership was the yeah. problem all along that we can't really fix. Gordon comes in, just screams in our restaurant for an hour, yeah. and then he's like, fuck, problem solved, I guess. My Next job here is done. <laughs> I have no doubt. I have no doubt some of those restaurants were, were that were helped and were much better off for it. Yeah, but man, yeah. obviously, the, ultimately, what the TV network wants and what the restaurant wants are two very different yeah, things. Yeah, of course. yeah, yeah. Maybe Gordon wants both, but I mean, ultimately, it's I'm like sure we're, here the, for, we're here to get the yeah, shots. Yeah, yeah. We're here to argue. Like, how much, how much contact time do they actually have with Gordon? Apparently, not that much. Is it just like two days or something? 
Yes, yeah, so if I, that, dude, I went on this rabbit hole because I was okay. so fascinated by all of this. Right. I wanted to know everything about how this worked. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, it would not be that much. It was mm. literally he would come in, do the film segments, and then leave. Yeah. Um, yeah, that you know, sounds about right. Because he's like, I've I've remodeled the place to make it look more alive, and it's like, like no, your, your, your production, <laughs> your, your production team. Like, what do you What do you mean? Like, like you, I've come up with new recipes, and like Gordon, you're a three star Michelin chef. There ain't no fucking way <laughs> you came up with recipes with this one fucking this, dingy yeah, ass restaurant, man. I, no, it's literally. It just also which wouldn't make sense because assume, yeah. assume it, I assume the filming schedule would be so intense mm. that it, it, it makes no sense that he would be hands on to that degree. No. Yeah. Maybe when he's there, I if you told me that he actually cares about it. I, I believe that. Like mm. when he's there and he's filming yeah. this stuff, but yeah. there's just no way they've had the time that they need. Well, he it. has to care because that's his job. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it's like, he's, that's kind of what and, he's getting paid and, to and do. And the show's so scripted. Like, yeah, it, it is. Like, of course it, it is. It's the same beat. So obviously yeah. there's this part, there's this part, and then we have the reconciliation and then we have yeah. owner maybe admits that he's wrong or whatever. It's just like, all right, whatever. So, 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 what, so, where's, the, so where's the part of the episode where I say yeah. it's planned? Yeah, is there like, <laughs> is there like an episode of like <laughs> Kitchen Nightmares where the, the owner just refuses to admit that they're wrong or yes. something. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I've, okay. seen, I've seen clips of it. Yeah. I need really... to watch more Kitchen Night. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you know, so there was a, a very famous episode. Right. Uh, I don't know. Do we even need to explain what Kitchen Nightmares is? Everyone fucking knows what this is, right? Like, I think so. Yeah. so. Gordon Ramsay fixes a struggling restaurant. Mm. There. Everyone That's... has seen this. Yeah. Uh, the literal clips make have like 50 billion views on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. So there was one. It was um the little baking company, right? What was it? What was it called again? Um. Uh, baking company called uh, Nightmares, Kitchen Nightmares, type it in. Yeah. It was like, it, I think the year, the, when that episode aired or when it came out, it was like the most Googled thing of that time. Oh, right. Wow. It, this episode was so yeah, huge because it was like an hour long one where they were just shouting and they never fixed anything. And everyone thought it was like fake, but after like having a lot of people go to the restaurant, this was like full legit. Like yeah. was, these people were like insane. Right. And they just somehow, these producers God just God damn, that's beautiful. <laughs> Dude, I would love that job. I used to, I just finding restaurants that are fucked and going yeah. and like just find these crazy owners. That yeah. sounds like such a fun experience. I want to know like, what is the process of finding Request these restaurants? Yeah, I, I wish. Uh, it, so I'm wondering, do they apply for the show or do they like kind of, I'm guessing people do apply for the show and they have some kind of system. There was an application. Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. okay, okay. I remember because sometimes they mention it in the show and they applied or yeah. this person, because a lot of the times, I think initially they weren't exactly told what the TV show mm. was. Yeah. And they're just pitching like, do you want your restaurant to be helped on camera with Gordon Ramsay? Yeah. Yes. Mm. And it's like, this is the shittest kitchen in all of North Hampshire or whatever. <laughs> it's like, all right, <laughs> it's like, sign all right. up for that. <laughs> like, <a bit> harsh. <laughs> no one would want to uh, eat I'm here. Sure, I'm sure there's a bunch of restaurants as well that are just like <laughs> so much on the dying brink that they're like last for ours. <laughs> just be like, well, Gordon Ramsay came here before it shut down two days later, you know? So we got our 15 minutes of <laughs> Yeah, I, I, Steve runs the worst Italian restaurant in all of Connecticut. He's an asshole. <laughs> yeah, well, he's gonna fix it. <laughs> like, I think the best like promotion they got for the restaurant is not like Gordon Ramsay coming in and fixing the fucking recipes and changing a few mm. tables and some shit. Yeah. It's being on fucking Kitchen Nightmares, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah. My favorite entire segment of Kitchen Nightmares Blah. is when they're like they. Thank they, you, um, thank you very much, Mosey. Very much for the raid. They don't, they don't Hello, everybody. Tell you this, but they don't also try and hide it. It's really weird. So, all right. So, for everybody that just joined, we are doing a flight from Seattle to Anchorage, Alaska. This is a Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. It is a very realistic flight sim. And, you know, we're just kind of chilling out, having a good time, listening to Trash Taste, a new episode that came out today. So, yeah. Feel free to stay by and just kick back, relax. It's definitely, uh, it's definitely one of those sort of streams. So, yeah. There's always that segment mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. Gordon goes to the restaurant and he wants to see how the restaurant functions. Mm -hmm. And obviously, it always it always goes wrong. Of course, yeah. it's a disaster. And the cut the restaurant is filled with customers, right? Yeah. But it, they're like customers that have been invited because they know they're filming, right? Because mm, you yeah. obviously can't just go in a restaurant, <coughs> have a bunch of cameras, and get everyone to sign the waivers. Right? Yeah, so yeah. They fill them with this thing, but they don't actually like tell you the audience that they kind of brought all these people. Yeah. But then suddenly, all the customers start being picky about everything, and you're yeah. like, "Well, hold on a second. I feel like, I feel like they're trying to make this a disaster. Like everything has been good, and everything goes wrong. Everyone always ends up fighting. Yeah. Someone yeah. storms out. It's like, yeah. Yeah. there is no way this is a normal night. 
of yeah. dining. <laughs> like, and no way are these restaurants full on a normal night no, of dining. No, of course not. Yeah. Oh, that, you just remind me of like this fucking weird, uncanny valley effect that I've had with like some reality TV shows recently. Have you watched like Britain's Got Talent? Like recently, that's yeah, uh, awful. Yeah. So there's one thing that they've added, like in autopilot. More recent I don't know Stop when they implemented stupid. this, but I remember watching Britain's Got Talent in like <laughs> fucking 2006, 2000, like all the way back in university, um, in like the early season, and it was like, you know, they had the same kind of format. But recently, they've been like adding these shots, like these what I would call like audience, audience vox pops, there we right? Go. Where the talent comes on stage and then there'll be like a vox pop good. of an like audience member commenting We're on the talent We're at flight level 250, yes, we're and headed towards and Anchorage. And I'm like, this is so fucking weird because there is no way you just like, you, you have good audio to just capture a random yeah, audience no, member. No. Someone, someone here is a plant. It's like, you, you know, you know when you see some of those like E3 trailers and they have like the fake gaming chatter yeah. or some of the trailers, that's what it fucking feels was like you know yeah, I, think, I think i've seen one where it's like it was like a, a magician or something and yeah. he kind of had like a unique look to him mm. yeah. and it just randomly cut, as he's walking on stage it just randomly cuts to the shot in the audience of these two girls who are like oh, fucking looks really yeah. <laughs> and i'm like we didn't we didn't need that we really that, that was an unnecessary reaction uh, yeah reality tv has been like dying so they're just doing crazier and yeah. crazier shit right yeah it's it was just like it's just such a weird thing that they've added and it feels to me it feels it makes it feel even more fake, Request right? Because you know, especially now being in production, uh, seeing seeing how finicky audio is, <laughs> there, there ain't no way you can fucking zoom in on just two random audience members just to hope that someone says yeah. something interesting yeah. about mention, who's going on stage. Not to mention the one that I, the, the clip that I just mentioned. I remember I was like, "There's no way this is real because everyone is clapping." in yeah. this huge yeah. room yeah, yeah. and these two girls are whispering <laughs> and it's perfect audio and I'm like I don't see a mic on you <laughs> and you just happen to know to yeah. place the camera at that particular time yeah. it's like come on. Yeah, I just want to know do they just like get a random person in queue and just be like Yo, so I want you to say something really quirky when the when the guy comes on stage okay just just say, just say something really quirky just comment yeah. on how he looks just be mean like just be mean just be really really mean yeah. and then when they do the act just be really surprised and say how great it was yeah. right yeah. Like, oh that was actually kind of surprising yeah. Dude, producers are some of like the cruelest people on earth, dude. Some of the shit that they set up is so cruel. Yeah. Oh, uh, like, yeah. Tormenting people for fun. <laughs> yeah, like I mean, I, I I've watched some videos recently just talking about like one of the most infamous Japanese live streams. I've Oh, I've seen this video. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you yeah, guys have yeah, seen this yeah, video yeah. as well cuz it like got recommended for like ages, but I like they literally trapped this poor guy, this poor Japanese guy in a room, you know, in a like a oh, random this is the house. one in the late nineties, right? In the late nineties, yeah. yeah. and he basically had to win his freedom through raffle tickets or raffle prizes, basically. Yeah. And they fucking literally started him bare naked in this room, and he, I think, lived in the room for like months and months and months and months. Nobu, was that it? No. Nobu, that was it. Yeah. That was his Nobu, name, yeah. Nobu game show. But it was like, um, the TV show's still ongoing. Not that segment, because it's a very famous comedy show. Yes. Yeah. In Japan. Yes. And they have just segments that, um, they've just changed yeah. over mm -hmm. the years. But I mean, it's really popular. Yeah. And like, I think like the, the part that like, the part that got me so fucking angry, right, was he was in this one apartment by himself for months. No social interaction, no, like, sometimes he couldn't even eat well because it all, everything he won and everything he lived on depended on raffle tickets and raffle yeah. prizes, right? Um, and so after months and months and months of living in this place, he, uh, he, he wins his freedom. Right, and they're like, we're going. The producers are like, we're going to reward you. With so he's been in there for months with no human contact, and yeah. he literally can only. And the, by, by raffle, there's like mail in raffles. Like yeah. in Japan, you can win a lot of stuff for your oh, raffles okay, mailing in. Thank you very like much for dropping by. They just gave him a stack of magazines. Yeah, they were like, enter everything. Yeah, and so he finally wins his freedom. Um, and then so he, they reward him with this nice trip to Korea, mm. and he he has a fun day at the park. You know, they they film him in a, like an amusement park and mm. stuff like that. Uh, and then they blindfold him for his final prize. Yeah. And then they take him to this mysterious place. Mm. And then they ask him to take the blindfold off. And it's another room. And then the producer just says, strip your clothes right now. <laughs> and it's, you just see the soul leave from his body. And it's just, what? I'm like, you're watching this and you think, I'm literally watching torture right now. It's like a what? snuff film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally a snuff film. Yeah. yeah. Well, like, Japanese game shows have been notoriously not 
very chill. <laughs> but people sign, sign the waivers and they do it. Yeah. Like, well, people agree to this. Yeah. And, yeah. Lot, yeah. and, and especially in Japan, I feel uh, a lot of like comedians that are up and coming or kind of not, maybe not selling as much or, you know, are open to doing like any kind of job at this point just to like stay relevant. Yeah. Are the ones who throw themselves into these situations. Because I remember like there was a, another, I don't, I don't remember if it's the same show, but there was another show similar to that where like these two comedians were locked in two separate rooms and right. they couldn't get in contact with each other for an entire, I think it was like a week or two weeks. Mm. And there, there was one door out of their room and it leads to an open paddock that has a bunch of farm animals. Right. And what they have to do is that they have to survive purely off of the breast milk of those animals that they catch for that day. Ugh. For like two weeks. Holy shit. And there's no, and, and, and the one, and the, the one fuck? rule is like, and the one rule is you're not allowed to drink water. <laughs> so like your, your food and your like drink and everything is purely based on A, how many animals you can catch yeah. and B, how much milk you oh, can get out yo, of it. Yo, so, so, someone to get that boy some milk yeah. to another <laughs> fucking level, man. I just, I, I, I'm just imagining oh, this God. and I'm like, God, the the horrendous shits that they must have just had. Oh God. <laughs> You're just drinking milk for two weeks straight. Yeah. It's just horrible for your health. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I you know, I obviously base question of how real is it? Obviously, yeah. if you're taking mm. it at face value, it seems fucking awful. Yeah. I'm sure there was some behind the scenes stuff involved where- yeah. I fucking it hope so. <laughs> yeah. I, I, you have to I hope, really right? hope, so, to hope. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, with, with the Nobu situation, I'm like, the, the whole situation played out a bit too well yeah. for them, for the producers not to be like, I, I feel like the, the producers Overspeed. decided what to send Overspeed. him at what time, because mm. just as he was running out of food or something, he would get a, like a small W, like a whole bag of rice or something. Yeah. And it would be like, it was, it's like a, kind of like an entire story. In, in a sense. Yeah, it was weird. So he was sending like a few hundred a day, right? Yeah. He was, entering, yeah. He was, he was spending weird. like hours a day just like writing up. Yeah. yeah. Short video about it. It's very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we can't really do it justice because yeah. we're remembering. It's yes. fucked. This episode is sponsored by Harry's. Boys, giving a great gift can make you look really good. And giving the gift of Harry's to the men on your list can make them look good as well. This holiday season, God treat damn, a loved that's one beautiful. or yourself to Harry's starter set for a better shave. I know who I'm going to be buying Harry's. Connor, would you like a Harry's for Christmas? I already have my own supply. Of but would you like another Harry's? I have for a Christmas? year's supply of Harry's. Come on, Connor, tell me why you want Harry's for Christmas. It's the only razor that I used. The first time I actually used it, I was like, all right, give me for my other razors. It is genuinely the best shave I've ever had. I highly recommend it. But boys, did you know that the Harry's starter set includes a five blade German engineered razor, weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover. And get this, it is a $13 value for only $3. But only if you use our link harrys.com slash trash taste only if you have a link and boys harry's new holiday gift boxes include premium shaving and grooming products in gift boxes nice enough to go right under the tree no wrapping required so check off all the guys on your list with a harry starter set. i actually First time use harry's 13 dollar value for again just like $3. even before like trash taste so i've been using trash them taste. and check out harry's gift boxes as well but act fast because these offers are for a limited time with limited stocks so again go to harry's.com slash trash taste this episode is sponsored by ExpressVPN. Watching Netflix without using ExpressVPN back to back like sponsors, to arcade, holy shit. But only shit. being allowed to play one game. What? Why would you do that, guys? Come on. Netflix in every single region has different content They got libraries. zesty this and time. And if you use ExpressVPN, you holy can make shit. sure that you access every single <laughs> one of those libraries. Every single one? Every single one. ExpressVPN lets you control where you want Netflix or other streaming websites to think you're located. So guys, the World Cup is happening right now. And mm -hmm. you know what? As much as I love the Japanese commentary, I miss the good old British commentary. Oh, yeah. So I've been watching the World Cup via ExpressVPN on the BBC iPlayer. Because I want to see football come home, okay? <laughs> it has blazing fast speeds and you can stream in HD with zero buffering. Woo. And they have servers in 94 different countries. Woo. So you gain Woo. access to thousands of new shows. So don't be stupid. Be smart. Stop paying full price for streaming services and oh, only yeah. getting access to a fraction of their content. Get your money's worth by going to expressvpn.com slash trash taste. That's expressvpn.com slash trash taste to get an extra three months Months of Express VPN for free. Woo! Woo! Back to the episode. <laughs> <laughs> fun, uh, fun conversation topic uh, about Japan. <laughs> Go on. Yay. So I, um, I saw this article, uh, and it was a Japanese article about a, a Japanese thing. And I, I want to know your, your reaction and opinion on it. Yeah. So it was an article, and basically a guy, a kid, <laughs> uh, like a 15-year-old kid, had stolen 
uh, like a, a plug extension cord, like a five dollar plug extension okay. cord from, yeah. from the store. And his parents found out, mm. right? So his parents called the police and called, like, made him apologize and, and give the thing back. Mm. Um, and that was their way of like teaching him and, and punishing him, I guess. Yeah, because he stole, so stealing's bad, and you should get arrested for it. Sure. Yeah. Um, what I was surprised by was, what do you reckon the the Japanese comments were? Like, what do you think the the, the overall thoughts were on, on, on that move? Uh, on, on the parents calling the police? Yeah, what do you think? What do you think? How do you think the Japanese people reacted to that? What, okay, well, okay, first of all, question, how do you react to that? What do you, what do you think when uh, you hear that? It's a bit excessive. <laughs> I mean... What do you think? Do you think it's good setting an example, or do you think it's overkill? Um, so, the parents called the police, right? So that they found out they, their son uh, had stolen this like plug extension. Yeah, the plug yeah. store. Yeah. Uh, not from like a friend's house or anything like that, from store. Right? Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. so he shoplifted. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. shoplifting. No, not to see if your friend makes any better, but somehow, <laughs> if, I, if I stole a PlayStation from Joe, you're like, nah, don't worry about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't call the cops. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> he stole it from a store, right? Which yeah. feels way more like, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he, he stole it and then they, they called the police. Mm. And obviously he doesn't get like, he doesn't get jail time or anything because he, yeah. he's a kid, but you know. Yeah, just a slap know, gets, on the wrist, right? And, yeah. and gets scared and interrogated mm, for a yeah. while. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. oh, what, what do you think? What do you, how, how, would you, how do you feel about that? Do you think it's a good move? Oh, bad move? I, I feel like calling the police is kind of like going a bit nuclear. Yeah. Um, I would get him to return, try to return the mm. extension cord to the store before yes. doing anything else. Mm. And, you know, being completely, being completely honest with the store members to be like, this happened. Mm. Um, We're bringing it back. He's sorry. Yeah. You know, if you can, don't, you know, press the charges, we blah, all, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, we'll pay for the cord, whatever. Yeah. You know, I feel like. And then I would rinse him when I get home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. 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 Rinse. But definitely, like, at the very least, get him to apologize to the store members. Yeah. yeah. And stuff like that. Oh, that's yeah. right. I, I like a little bit um, I, don't, I don't know what I would do. I feel like I, in, in my head, mm. I see that as them. <laughs> I don't know if this is like fair. I feel like you're just kind of making your parenting obligations and putting them on the police. Like you're mm. doing the parenting, right? Because you're like, like, ah, oh, fucking, yeah, scare him. Make him, make him feel bad about right, it. Right. It's like, I don't know. Couldn't, shouldn't, if he's your kid, shouldn't you kind of install these beliefs and then you know, punish him yeah, or give him, you I, know. I don't know. I, I feel like I, I, it's not going that far, I think, because no. he needs to learn that he has consequences and oh, consequences for, sure. for wrong actions. I think the police. Belt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think <laughs> the belt is yeah. still. Yeah. I think police is a little bit extreme, but at the same time, you know, I, I feel like the parents are taking the boy to the police you mm. know, to see, to show him that there are consequences, which I think is different from some examples I've seen where parents are just like, you know, other people should just handle mm. this. Mm. Uh, you know, teachers need to teach better and yeah. discipline my child and yeah, stuff like yeah. that, you know? Um, you know, because I think there's a big difference between you taking an active role into taking the person to see what the consequence of their action is mm. versus wanting someone else to completely take over for you. Yeah. Yeah. So what was the uh, Japanese reaction then? Uh, the, uh, from what I saw, they were like, oh my God, the parents are so brave. <laughs> and a lot of people were what? in the and, and the general consensus was that it was a really brave and really honorable thing the parents did. Brave? They, yeah, it was brave. Was well, the what's brave saying. about it? Uh, I guess because they, uh, I don't know. Well, because most Japanese place. parents would just be huh. like. Oh, or maybe just take it back. I don't know. I, to me, it's like, it's weird. Cause I, I think that, you know, I feel like the police have fucking better things to do. Well, they, I'm not, I don't know about Japan, but generally, yeah. right? Because like, if the they just like, oh, finally, yeah. I, don't <laughs> I don't know. I feel like the police should do real uh, stuff and not fucking I mean, parent I mean, I mean, kids. I, I feel like this this might work for Japan just because maybe only in Japan. Is right. <laughs> yeah. Bro, could you imagine in the in the UK if you did this in America, they did laugh at you. They'd be like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Stop wasting our time. Uh, yeah. I got to deal with like actual shit happening. Yeah. Like, parent your goddamn kids. Yeah. Um, it's no, weird. I, I I agree though with the whole thing of like it, it, it is up to the parents. I believe it's a you. Sh I don't yeah. know if it's me. Yeah. I think that this is. And this, just way, this is coming from three dudes who are not. We parents. don't have kids. <laughs> yeah. I just think when I when I heard this, my initial reaction was like, "Oh wow, nice, wasting police time." The right. one that just yeah, came out no, today. I agree. I agree. But I also read. Now this is on a Reddit. It wasn't an article, so I take it with a grain yeah. of salt. This okay. was like a, 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 I think it was a, a reaction uh, thread. No, it was a foreign couple with uh, one of them was Japanese, one of them was foreign. Yeah. Yeah. And 
one of them was foreign, the foreign guy was posting on Reddit, being like, what, are we, what the fuck, what, what is this? Yeah. So I think it was on, it was from one of the J Japan Reddits, because I just love keeping up with them, seeing what, seeing what fun stuff's happening. Yeah. And um, uh, this, uh, his daughter that was like eight to 10 years old, had taken a, an eraser mm, from yeah. a store. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've seen and all the of them. the store owner called the police right. on, on the kid. I'm big yeah. on trash taste. And taste. the police uh, like interrogated the kid for like three hours because they stole an eraser. And then <laughs> we're like taking, apparently we're taking like, uh, we're, they were like, oh, don't worry though. We won't, we'll, we'll put it in the system, but we won't- we <laughs> Is won't, it bad that I'm laughing? We won't send it to HQ. Right. They were like, what the fuck? <laughs> you trying to traumatize this? You, you're just trying to teach him a lesson. You're trying to teach him a lesson. I just want to, I just want to see the scene of like the kid coming out the, with the cuffs and the towel over uh, the hands. Thank you very I much for the biddies. Like, uh, so what happened was, sorry. Thank um, you, thank the, you. Sorry, the, the, so what happened, the, the mother made the daughter take the eraser. I remember it. Yeah. The mother made the daughter take the eraser back to the store like, yeah. and made them apologize. Like you yeah. said, like, yes. Go and apologize, get back. And the store owner caught call the, the cops <laughs> from that. <laughs> Right, and right. it was uh, like, whoa! I, in my mind, I read that. I was like, Jesus Christ! Yeah. And so you're like, oh, dude, I'm sorry, my daughter. She's, you know, she didn't, you know, stole it. Not, you know, here it is. Yeah. You're like, fuck this shit. I'm calling the police. I'll be like, no, oh, holy that's fuck! Like, that's fuck that's an yeah. asshole move on the store. Owner's yeah. Part. I mean, holy lawfully shit. he's rightful to do so, but yeah. you know, yeah. Yeah. So it's like that's 80 very years. fucking excessive. <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah. I just again, what a what a fucking waste. It's, it's like a 50 time. cent yeah. eraser, and yeah. they're just yeah. like, yeah. Um, I, mean, I mean, it's. Yeah. I mean, the kid's got to learn somewhere. No, right? I, the kid has to learn. Yeah, but like, no, I'm, I'm talking about yeah. the store owner. The yeah, kid has yeah. to learn, and you know, he's not your fucking kid, so you, you can call the fucking police. But you know, you can be like, you, this is your chance to be like a good, like good, a good Samaritan, showing a good example of, the, you know, to the kid of if you admit to your wrongdoings, there, you know, there can be consequences, but yeah. there is also a chance for forgiveness as well. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I'm just like, that's 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 my take. That's well, I mean, my the kid, take. The kid has like not developed at all. <laughs> the kid, <laughs> the kid the, uh, yes, the, the, maybe the kid will steal and then he will learn that this is very bad. And my, my God, the kid will very much learn now. Yeah. He should not steal yeah, things. But then yeah. I but like, feel, that's too excessive. Yeah, yeah, but then I feel now the kid is gonna be scared to do anything. But yeah, see, right? the, the, the guy on Reddit was basically asking, yeah. I think he was kind of asking like, hey, how can I like how can I lodge? <laughs> how, yeah, how can I lodge a complaint or get something done? But like yeah. it was because I don't like they they were like this is fucked up. Like and, and yeah. I, I I don't know the law is, but I, it seemed even for Japan that that was not what you were supposed to yeah, do. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. much that up. is way overboard. Now, that was yeah. like a bra moment. They kind literally of, yeah. like apparently he said for three hours they were questioning her and they wanted to question her without the mother there, but the mother was like absolutely. Well, not. Yeah, that's Bro, fucked up. What? How do you? <laughs> what the fuck? How do you, you found you, it? Yeah, I found it. They made a uh, writing confession and also took her mugshot. Yeah, Bruh. Oh, oh, holy oh, shit. They made a confession <laughs> and they took the mugshot. The how, how old was the kid? Six. Six? Oh, oh my god. Oh, god. Oh, so wait, can I, holy can I, can I shit. Read oh, Let me read out the full story. Oh this my god. This shit was so insane. <laughs> you imagine <laughs> getting a mugshot done at six, six years old? I did not six. do this joke story justice. Okay. okay. And that's going on a record so too if happened. they did that. I had my first police experience and oh not in the way god. I would have expe ever expected. My six year old daughter stole an eraser from a stationary store when her mum found it around an hour later she marched her back to apologize and the upstanding storekeeper young dude early 30s called the cops Bruh. and he said he's going to call her school <laughs> he's there's a store and he's going to call the school offer to do it actually since he said the cops probably will <laughs> cops show up and they continue the forced march to the police station they interrogated her made her write a confession and took her mugshot Bruh. They actually wanted to do it without the mother in the room and the mum said fuck that they said that since she's under 14 they won't be sending her file to hq the whole ordeal <laughs> took around three hours poor girl was crying and shaking the whole time her mom isn't no doing shit. much better i know you'll be asking for the details here i'm not japanese her mom is i wasn't with them she never stole anything before no i didn't punch the storekeeper no i didn't punch the <laughs> cop my fair call is blue i like walks on the beach great uh, so i think uh, <laughs> he was kind of asking like uh, uh, it was really sounded sad as well i was like the kid is okay on the surface but the thing that but oh that thing, kid is scarred for life yeah. the kid's yeah. doing okay on the what surface the, the first thing she did when she woke up the next morning was to wash her cups that were in the sink which makes me think that she still feels guilty and she's in trouble we're working on that it's like what the fuck man holy this shit this story is insane 
like, like, I don't know if it's true. It's Reddit, right? But I, yeah. she's I, gonna be terrified of confrontation for the rest of your life. Am I the asshole? So I just interrogate you for three hours. Am I the asshole? I was bored. I had nothing to do at work, so I thought, fuck it. But that dude, that was excited. Is my first interrogation. How? How do you like? This is it's just insane. You know, yeah. Sick. Six years old. I, I, I can. It's, it's sad to say. I can totally believe this being a real story here. Just because, yeah. again, it's like you know, we've talked about it's a lot. Japan thing. Ever. Yeah. Japanese police are, for the most part, bored as fuck because there's barely any crime that happens. They're often here. joked about being online. I've seen this a lot about being just babysitters because they often yeah. don't. Yeah do much and they kind of enforce very odd stuff like this. Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, I'm go like, I, I guarantee because like, I, I feel like this would ca this could happen only in a place like maybe like Japan or somewhere like mm. that because the store owner calling the police kind of like matches up because it's just like I don't know what to do. It's not my. It's you know I'm just following protocol. The, the protocol is how? call the police. You're six years old. I, I, do, I do not see I it. Just, how, I just see a stolen <laughs> eraser. How do Therefore, you, how do you <laughs> see a six-year-old girl returning this less than a one-dollar eraser and be like, you mm, fucking shit? Oh, this motherfucker! <laughs> this motherfucker! Police! Criminal! <laughs> He's oh cold God. hard. <laughs> yeah, maybe maybe he had like a weird like yeah. false sense of like justice being like, if I don't stop her now, she'll do it again. Yeah. And it'll just get bigger and bigger and bigger. So I have to stop her at the arena. Where's, where's like the Japanese better call Saul like spin off? Like the mom <laughs> yeah. calls Saul? Like, your honor, <laughs> this child is six years old, your honor. <laughs> what is the kid gonna, like genuinely, what is the kid going to take away from like being six years old and traumatized? I just don't understand. Well, she'll she never go insane. into a stationary store for the rest of her life. Uh. <laughs> she'll, be like, she'll be like, she won't even be able to say the word eraser. It's yeah. like, can I borrow the... <laughs> I, I, just, like, I just read that shit and I was like, what the fuck, dude? Yeah, that's what what the Jesus fuck? Yeah. Christ. That Jesus is Christ. Uh, 10 levels above excessive. Yeah, that's um, what I said. Yeah. <laughs> that's the right again, like, I bet, I bet, I don't know if... Yeah, maybe some Japanese people will be like, dude, mom's so brave. <laughs> the police so are the police so so brave. Brave. is so brave, brave for taking a risk and, and just putting his safety in jeopardy by calling a, the police on a six year old. I just don't, I just don't. I mean, I, yeah. I, <laughs> dang, isn't a race really worth it? Like I just, I assume, I don't know how, maybe that they've had stuff robbed all the time. And this was like the final straw. Yeah. I don't know. But like, it just it's, felt it's like, like, it's like, this is like not the battle. It's yeah. like I on guess. average ADM. Yeah. Like it's, it's nothing. It's not even a dollar. It's like, it's just, it, they, they're coming back to say sorry. Yeah, just leave it yeah. at that. This is the kid that you don't call the, like the kid that you call the cops on, I, I, none of them, but like yeah. the person that you should be is the one who tries to get away and doesn't come back. Exactly. Like, yeah. If somebody's coming back, there's a, there's, they clearly care. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. It's clearly a fuck up. Yeah. Like, yeah. Why would you? And they clearly for the most part won't do it again. It's so not, it's just like. Yeah. It's not like it was a, like Women a Louis learned. Vuitton bag, right? Oh, yeah. my, my five-year-old daughter stole the Declaration of Independence. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on, man. I know that theft is like uh, yes, I am. way, way, Technically. way more harshly in Japan than than say Western uh, countries. Like just, obviously, just, just all crimes. I mean, I mean really. it's, it's all crimes, right? I, 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 not all crimes are equal in Japan, dude. There's so okay. So I obviously there's a whole whole thing of if it's a fine, it's not a crime for the rich, right? Yeah, yeah that's like the you. and there are a lot of stuff in Japan where it is fined where you would get prison time in like our country mm, or like yeah. my life. like so like um. <laughs> Um, like in America, right? Drink driving is like a misdemeanor, right? Uh, oh no, sorry, it's a, a misdemeanor in Wisconsin. It's, it's in, federal. It's in, it's in it's Wisconsin. Right. It's a felony Wisconsin if you do a, that. It's well, very lenient okay, on drink so driving. In, like, in, a, in the UK and Australia, I think. You can not drive yeah, drunk. America, you go to jail, uh, even if you're over the limit. But Japan has like two limits. There's one where it's like a little, oh, come on. <laughs> Give that boy a fine. You know, Give that boy a fine. Little Mario can't drive. You can't drive yeah. for a few months. I think there's two. Can you look this up? There's one where you definitely like full on punishment, lose your license. But there's one if you're over a limit, you don't really get much for punishment. It's a fine. And in Japan, fines aren't considered criminal. No. They're, They're transactions. Yeah. <laughs> so, so the way it works is that like you don't, if you pay the fine, mm -hmm. you're done. If the transaction, yeah. yeah, the transaction is over. Yeah. yeah. It's really odd. And there's a few other crimes. Kind of, kind of sounds like legalized bribing in this yeah. sense, doesn't it? <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you describe it like that. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, officer, officer, if I give you an extra thousand yen, will you rub it off the record? <laughs> not, <laughs> not, it's, not, it's not a fine, it's a legalized bribe, guys, come on. I'm Get forced it. to bribe. <laughs> you pay $250, <laughs> I drive home drunk. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Um, yeah, in Ohio, it's taken very seriously. Uh, three years imprisonment or a fine of 500,000 yen. 
That's for the which limit is that? Is that the one? There's two limits, right? There's one depending on which blood level your alcohol is. Hold on, did you say five hundred thousand yen or a three years in prison? Yeah, well, I think it's and. But and three years in prison. Okay, I was about to say if yeah, it's uh, or, yeah. I don't know who's gonna be like. Guess I'll waste three years behind bars. <laughs> 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 so, five grand. <laughs> Okay. There's definitely like laws in Japan that aren't punished as three years in prison for drunk driving. Stuff that's punished oh way boy. Than yeah, like yeah. anything with even children, that's more harsh than oh, this year. Oh, you don't go to prison uh, for just it. Like, little slap on the wrist. Everywhere else, it's like you're going to. You might get yeah. parole, yeah. I, I, but that's about it. I mean, I don't know the specific specifics of it, but mm. obviously, even like. Um, I mean, no, it's good depressing, but it is, it is very depressing. Mm -hmm. I think it's important to mention mm -hmm. it. Yeah, like, of course. There's no um, dual custody laws in Japan. So if you divorce, it's often like, you know, it's a bit, bit sus. And also, like, domestic violence is pretty bad here, and it's very underreported because mm -hmm. a lot of the times they're just like, well, nothing we can do. Yeah. Guy like, says there's he, no evidence. Guys, yeah. he didn't do it. Yeah. Um, and it kind of sucks. I mean, obviously, Western countries are like that as well. But I know that certain punishment for things, and again, off the top of my head, I'm not, I can't remember which ones, but I know there's certain crimes that should be punished way more. <laughs> yeah. Like, I mean, like sexual crimes aren't taken nearly as no, seriously yeah. as in other countries. No. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, I mean, you know, it's pretty, yeah. it's pretty sad. It's fucked up. Yeah. yeah. Well, going going back to the kid though, yeah. I'm just like wondering, was there like ever a point in your life that you have like internalized as like a point where you're like, oh, this is bad. I should not do this thing again. You know, when you were young or something. Cause oh, yeah, like, you know, every, every, every parenting has like different like disciplining methods. And I will never ever forget my dad's disciplining method. Okay. Yes. I'm about, I'm about oh. to call you out dad. Because <laughs> cause I, 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 might, I might take notes and I might, uh, I might, I might actually uh, learn from you because yeah. I remember, you know, you know, there's a lot of dis disciplining methods, methods people have talked about when they were kids, you know, especially in Asian countries, you know, you get a, get a little slap, you know, a little, little spanking, you know, mm -hmm. maybe, maybe mm -hmm. you get shouted out or something. Mm -hmm. My dad has never raised his voice to me. When I, when I did something wrong as a kid, he never raised his voice to me at all. Instead, I remember this one time, uh, I rarely have seen my dad angry. I can't even remember what I did wrong, right? <laughs> but I did something wrong that disappointed my dad a lot and uh, made, oh him, made him angry. And I remember instead of shouting at me, instead of like, instead of like giving me a smack or whatever, uh, he would just lecture me and teach me and refused to let me go anywhere aside from listening to him <laughs> oh, lecture me. No. And I swear That's what to my God, grandpa this lecture does. lasted around <laughs> three like hours. two hours. Yeah. And, it was and just, two, three oh. hours. And I remember I did this thing at like 11 p.m., oh, right? I was the, tired. It's the worst like, way no, to do it. You're not allowed to go to sleep. You need to listen to me lecture you, right? <laughs> and he would just lecture in the calmest of voices, right? Not angry at him. He would just lecture me, but just refuse to let me go anywhere until I, you know, fully listen to him. And I, th and One for some reason, decimal, zero, uh, like IV, after that point, two, I was like, I am never angering dad again. <laughs> I would rather just get shouted at <laughs> or fucking AIC spanked two, for like five minutes and then it's done. My punishment is done. But now I know if I piss off dad, I'm wasting three hours of my fucking life. Yeah, you're, you're listening to a one man podcast yeah, for yeah. two hours. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I remember it was, it was like we, we it was, there was a point where I realized I had shared trauma, right? <laughs> Because I remember this one time in Thailand, I was, my dad is like the eldest sibling of this family, mm -hmm. right? And he has like a pretty big family. Mm. Uh, and I was hanging out with uh, one of my uncles. <laughs> I was hanging out with one of my uncles and we were just talking. And I remember um, he was like one of the younger, uh, younger, younger brothers mm. of his family. So I remember talking about, oh, you know, when, when I was young, my dad would discipline me by lecturing me for hours. And then I remember my uncle just shut up for like two minutes and you could just see like a wave of memories <laughs> coming back. <laughs> the PTSD, yeah, the PTSD just comes back and he just like, yeah, he did the same to me as well. <laughs> oh, <laughs> That's no. such a power, but this yeah. is miserable. Yeah, it, it was, it was miserable, but yeah. it fucking worked yeah. because I, I, I knew, I knew afterwards that that was the that was the traumatic experience of my childhood. Not, not really traumatic, but that was that was like a core memory for me. Mm. Just to be, just to be like, okay, 
what I did was wrong. I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to piss off dad or anything like that. Um, yeah, so good on you, dad. Just, uh, yeah. I, I, might, I might take that. I might fucking take I that. I definitely feel like, yeah, because my, my parents were kind of the same. It's like very rarely they would actually like shout. Yeah. Because like I feel for a kid, and I don't know if it's just me, but like for a kid, there is nothing more, I guess, traumatizing than not seeing an angry parent. But seeing a disappointed parent, <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, like, oh. Angry parent is like, it's like, okay, they're angry, they're scary, but it's usually for a short amount of time, yeah, right? Yeah, like you can't yeah. be angry for hours, right? Yeah. You can't be shouting for hours. Yeah. But you can be disappointed for oh. days, <laughs> you know? sometimes weeks, depending on the parent. And yeah. like that shit just lingers, oh. right? Yeah. Every it hour hurts. that you're in the same house as them. Yeah. And I feel like as a kid, that shit just hits you oh. so much harder <laughs> yeah. than seeing your parents actually be like, yeah, no, mad yeah. About yeah. that's the right. worst. So I feel it's like, yeah, it's a very, I mean, that's a tactic my parents used. That shit worked on me as well. And I'm like, you know what? I might use that method. You know, uh -huh. this, this scary part is the less they say, you know, if, if you yeah. tell them you've yeah. done something and they, they just say like one or two words and then go away, you're like, <laughs> I'm going to drop my kids off at the, the police station. <laughs> get oh. I'll, I'll drop <laughs> just drop me off the police station at mm. this point, man. Yeah, you just sit them down and you just like put in a number and you just show them. It's like, I'm about to call them. Well, they, well, they, had, that, uh, they had that American TV show, right? Where they would send the kids to prison. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh my God. Oh, my God. Them. That, that show so was fucking nuts. Like, it's so funny. Like, I don't know. Is this really a good idea? I don't know. It's still like a trauma machine yeah, in action. Like, yeah. uh, what is the line between traumatic experience and learning experience, right? Some You, you could argue that's a very, very my, thin my, line. My some, favorite, some people rule their empires on fear. Okay? My, yeah. right. my favorite thing about that show, though, was just like, it clearly, like, people didn't, oh, cl people clearly don't look at that show and look at, like, you know, kind of the, the, the depth, I the guess. Pillar or, like, of parenting. Yeah. yeah. And look, don't look at it as, like, the pillar of parenting because, like, it's just moments where, you know, they could be like 14 year old kid is like, uh, Brandon, you know, did drugs and, you know, stole a, an eraser from a stationery shop or whatever, right? And then yeah. there's, you know, a huge fucking dude with like tats and neck tats and everything just like shouting, being like, Do you don't want to disappoint your mom, right? And then it just cuts to be like, uh, Jose killed three people. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. and I don't know if this kid doesn't learn. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh. Oh, no. you, you're gonna have to say that again. <laughs> you really have to think about that. I'm curious saying. what the parents who are watching this think of uh, the punishment that the, the, the yeah. happened. Yeah, but. parents of trash taste. How do you how do you uh, yeah, how curious, do you lecture your curious. parents? How do you parent? Let, let yeah. your parent. Let your sons keep yeah. kids. Let's have three dudes who don't have kids talk about parenting and how to do good parenting. That's always okay, something. Listen, I don't know how to do good parenting, but I know what not to do. I, <laughs> yeah. I, I figured some stuff out. Yeah. And I know that I'm not taking my kid to police station. Yeah. Calling the cops six on my six-year-old. Six year old. I feel like their memory is just not going to be there. It's no. not. He, no. I, I, I do remember anything from being six years old. I would if I was taken to the police station. That's what, I'd remember that. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know anything else. I mean, I, I remember certain points very, very early on. Um, like I, I've told this story before, but I remember like the first time I lied, which was uh, what I believe I was like five or six yeah. years old, like, because I was just I remember I remember the <laughs> feeling of boy being, discovers yeah. lying. I, I, yeah, literally, it was that. It was that. It was that. It was literally like yeah, was, that invention of lying moment. Yeah, it was literally I was like five, six years old, and I'm gonna be like. I'm gonna do a pro gamer move. I'm, I'm gonna, gonna do something devious. I'm gonna do a devious <laughs> move right now. What if I don't tell my mother the truth? And my mother, of course, immediately caught on to it. And I remember that because I was like, oh, my first attempt at lying was a failure. Yeah, so it's like, your mom's just like, you fucking knew. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so by failing my first lie, yeah. it instilled in me for the longest time that every lie is yeah. a failure. I'm bad at lying. Yeah. Oh, bro, being a kid, your lies fucking suck. Yeah. Like, why? Why can't <laughs> Okay, I'm having a trash taste moment. I, I'm having one of those things. Okay. I can't remember if I've told the story. Or not. Okay, right. Where I lied to my mom about my hair when I, no, I cut it. I don't you, think so. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, <laughs> you know when you. <laughs> this is so dumb. <laughs> Why the fuck did I do this? So, you know when you, you sleep, right? And you wake up and you have bed hair. But when your hair's short, right? Sometimes the bed hair is like persistent. Yeah. Like no matter how much water you put on that bitch, it won't go down. Yes. Yeah. It will just stay up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. no. And so I had this, and I was like, this is annoying the shit out of me. I look dumb as fuck. I must have been like eight. And so I had this idea. I was like, it's not going down. Yeah. I got to just cut this shit. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so I just had, I had a piece of bed head that was like this. And it just wouldn't go down after I put a little water on it. It would stay up. And I'm like, what right. the fuck? So I took a pair of scissors, but in the mirror. 
<laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> fucking idiot. Yeah, yeah, I idiot. Realized, yeah, that was when I realized cutting hair, not the move. No. And then I realized, I looked, I looked to the side, uh, I was like, oh. Oh, there's just a patch missing. Because <laughs> that's how Dumb hair ass. works. Dumb And ass. obviously, obviously my mum comes home yeah. and she looks at it, she's like, what the fuck happened? What did you do? <laughs> and I was like, um, 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 I closed the door on my hair and it ripped it out. Uh, yeah, no. And she was like, what? Uh, was hello, like, he yeah. saw. She was hello. like, let's try it. Thank you very much for dropping by. <laughs> so, so, we go to the, so we go, we go to the door. We go to the door. It doesn't even fit in the frame. Like you couldn't even, if you, even if you, by God had willed this, it couldn't happen based on how the door was like framed. Like it just wasn't possible. And she was like, "What actually?" I was like, "I cut it because I, 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 it was sticking up and I couldn't get it down." She's like, "You're an idiot." Yeah. She just immediately marched me over to the barbarism and was like, "Just cut it all off. Cut it all. Yeah. It looks fucking stupid. Fix it." <laughs> <laughs> so I remember it was super short then and after because I fucked it up. I was a dumb oh idiot. God. Yeah, because like as a kid, I was like, man, parents are so good at uh, telling when you were lying, you know? Oh, and yeah. maybe I didn't realize I was just a fucking dumb kid. No, I was, I was bronze rank while they were like master rank. <laughs> I, was still, I was climbing still. Like, I, I didn't know how to lie. Yet. Yeah, you tried to go in for your ult and they just have a counter, right? It's just like, it's like this will get them. And it's like, oh, okay. It's like that LA no Noir moment where it's just like, look at the subtle facial features to tell if someone is lying. Did you did you ever play your Game Boy late into the night and then they would try and come in your room? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, of course, of course. <laughs> Get really good at hiding it. I of course, know, I, I, my go-to was like I would I would put it in the pillow, but then obviously they learned. They I was like, yeah, you had to keep you had to keep thinking of new ways where you could hide it. I put yeah. it in my pants. That's smart. See, that's yeah. <laughs> like, up, boy, you're like, what is that? What is that square-shaped penis you have? <laughs> it's like, uh, I just shit myself. <laughs> 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 it, 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 Joe, Joe, you're five years old. There's no way you're packing this badly, man. <laughs> <laughs> <What the laughs> <fuck? laughs> Pack oh, like God. a USB. <laughs> did, you ever, did they ever like try and find it? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> See, I, they didn't initially, but then they weren't convinced that I wasn't sleeping. Yeah. yeah. And they were like, he's hiding it somewhere. And they would just maybe do like a fucking search in the middle of the night. Like, stand up. We're going to check the bed, yeah. check under the mattress, check everything. <laughs> like, Damn, they're good. <laughs> figure this shit out. Did, did, did you ever have like an experience mm -hmm. of like going to like one kid's house whose parenting was obviously like very different and had like oh, yeah, different dude. rules and you oh, yeah. and you just like your mind would be blown by oh, the yeah. shit oh, yeah. you <laughs> get the, away with. The kid who like just had everything. Yeah. The kid yeah. who just got all the stuff he wanted. Yeah. That shit was like going to his house was like Disneyland. Yeah, oh, no, yeah. Was like, we get to play Crash Bandicoot yeah. and Spyro. That was not me. No, if we, if we, the, the, that kid in my life was yeah. like, their parents, I guess their dad was just like super chill. Yeah. Right? Like, especially compared, I mean, not to say my parents are like super strict or anything, but this, these parents are like a little bit too chill. Yeah. Right? To the point where, oh, this kid's going to be like a problem mm. child. Right? Because I remember first time I went sleepover, right? Again, this is around the time where like I'm yeah. fucking, you know, yeah. hiding from my parents with this game, yeah. game boy yeah. shit yeah. right in the middle of the night. And I remember like, Dad comes in, tucks us in. He's like, "Yeah, you guys, you guys, good. You got water and everything." And then I, I fucking remember this moment where he, like, as he's closing the door, he turns around and he goes, "Don't play Game Boy for too long." <laughs> no. Like, uh, your dad lets you play it Bro, <laughs> like no. any amount of time. <laughs> Bro, my, no, no, dude. My, Bro, I, I, that's, yeah. not, that's not fair. Yeah. I, I love my mom, but she knows that. I complain about the dumbest shit growing yeah. up, and she always just, almost she always there with the plane. The show, the like, it yeah, no, that, I'm not. I'm still, still that's such a, that's okay. such a parent thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, no, we, we're there. We were. Not, I don't know if you were, you had the same thing. Mm. We were not allowed branded products. Like, it's yes. just like so. If there was like if there was toothpaste, we, you bet we're getting like Tesco on. If it was if it was crisps, it, it, you, no way in hell are you having Walkers. Yeah, it's, right. it's Tesco's or Little's own. Yeah. Everything was like the store brand version of right. everything. Because right. my mom believes she she my, she just cannot Turn fathom. She's like they're all the same. And okay, listen, there are some products I'm with you on, that, right? Yeah. Some products are the same brand. But get the fuck out of here. If you think that little crisps taste as good as Walkers, they just, <laughs> they flat out just don't. Because I did, there's this one time I had these, they're like, they were like snack, snack of bites or some snack of or something. There was yeah. some shit name. The packaging looks god awful and they taste like ass. 
I opened up this bag and there was just a brick of like ash. It was like co coagulated crisps that had been burnt to death. Oh and my it, God. it just came out of the bag. It was black and it just got ash of like crisp ash all over my desk. And yeah. I was like, wouldn't happen with walkers, mum. Your <laughs> mum is literally the epitome of we have walkers at home. Yeah. <laughs> so I just came to a bag of ash. It was literally just a bag. I kept making it. I, I, I was such a little shit kid. I was like, that. she was like, don't you want a bag of crisps? I, yeah, I want a bag of walkers. Yeah, because <laughs> the kids at school always had the branded snacks, and they were they were so fire, dude. Yeah, of course, yeah. so good. Of I, course, yeah, because like for me, I was like exact. I had like exactly the same <laughs> thing, <laughs> but with technology. Yeah, right. It was it was like. Oh God, you have your Ouya. You don't need an Xbox. Because <laughs> 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 no, you need an iPhone. You got a Zoom. Because yeah, I remember, I remember the first phone I got. Because like. Uh, Back when mobile phones started to like get oh, introduced, yes. right? The brick phones. Everyone had the fucking Nokia 3310, yeah. right? Right. Oh, and I was man. just like, damn. 33 I wanted to get it, not to get a phone, but to play Snake. Yes. Do, you, do you remember Snake? Yes. Snake was oh, like gold. Yes. the coolest fucking game. Hell yeah. You're like, this, this goes it. on forever. Yeah. And I was just like so disappointed when I got my first phone, and it was like a like a. An un I can't even fucking remember the brand. It was like one of the cheapest fucking phones you could buy in like phones for you or some shit like yeah. that. And I was just, I remember they had like, they had games on it, right? But they had this like, the, it was, it wasn't even Snake. It was like a very, very cheap knockoff of Snake. Yeah. And I was, it was pure copium. Me playing this being like, guys, I'm having fun. This is kind of like Snake. It's Cobra. It's yeah. Cobra, guys. It's Cobra. <laughs> I, I, my mum was very much against getting me any of us a mobile phone. Yeah. And she, she didn't for a very long time. And then she eventually caved when pretty much everyone else had, the, had one. Mm. And my mum was like, well, I, guess I, don't, I don't want to get bullied, so fine. Yeah. But, yeah, but I'm not buying because back then you had to top up, right? As well, you had to put mm -hmm. like yeah. ten pounds. Oh on yeah, it. yeah. You, you didn't text because mm. texting was expensive. Yeah, and you had 140 character limit. OG Twitter days, you had to like fit everything in, yeah. and yeah. if you didn't, you were fucked. So yeah, I mean, it took a while, but I got it. And yeah, all I did was just send funny Bluetooth videos to each other. Mm -hmm. We'd have like the what was that one video where it went down like the meadow? It was the shit car. Like, oh, scary, scary. And then it was like, the ah! Oh, yeah, yeah, that one yeah, there. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Shit like that. Oh, for some boy. reason, that was the funnest shit. Anchorage, let's go. They're so fucking dumb. <laughs> <laughs> now they get to do, now kids, bro, they can have everything. I can't believe I was entertained by that dumb shit. I know. I remember, oh my god. So I remember like, it was my second ever phone I got. Yeah. And like, you know, what was it? What was the phone? Remember what it was? It was the Motorola Razor. Oh, oh, the black one. I remember that, looks, that so has the cool. button on the side, Damn. and it like goes like that. Joey's parents wealthy. <laughs> no, no, no. So I'm, so I'm the oldest, you know, sibling, right? I have younger yeah. sibling, right? But like, you know how like it's very traditional where it's like if you have an older sibling, right? You yeah. usually get their hand me downs for yeah. a lot of yeah. things, right? I didn't yeah, have an older episode. sibling to this get my hand me downs. I got it from my dad. Oh, oh. <laughs> so <laughs> as I had this like shitty fucking phone, I don't even remember the brand of it. My yeah. dad had the Motorola Razor. And then when my dad the was razor like, goes I'm gonna fucking give myself hard. a fucking Blackberry. Yeah. You can have this fucking Dude, Motorola Razor. Dude, kids with the Blackberry back in the day were like the coolest shit. They were yeah. the coolest shit. I don't know why that was like the hype. But I remember- Thank I you very much the, for the I follow. The, I really the, appreciate the Motorola it. Razor, right? And this was around the time where you could start to get, use like, you know, custom ringtones, right? This is like the shit back in the day where it's like, oh, you could like, yeah. you know, yeah. download ringtones or like, yeah. you know, if you figured out a way to like, kind of like, uh, you know, pirate ringtones, right? And <laughs> yeah. then put them onto your phone. You were like the cool kid at yeah. school. Yeah. And I remember I was like at home and I was just like surfing around. And I'm like, man, all my friends around me have these fu cool fucking custom ringtones. It sounds so cool. I want one as well. So I started looking it up. Yeah. And I, and I remember I found a site that was like, you can get, get this, the Super Mario Brothers theme as a ringtone on your fucking Motorola Razor. And I was like, just $10. Dog, <laughs> this is it. And so I fill in some shit and I have it on my phone. Yeah. I go to school the next day and I'm like, check this out. Show them the ringtone. They're like, yo, that's sick as fuck. A month passes. My dad storms into my room. Oh no, <laughs> no. And, no. He, and he's like, son, why do you have a two thousand dollar phone bill? No! Oh what? my god! <laughs> Holy oh, shit! Fuck? It turns out the thing that I clicked was a pop-up ad, and uh, they were taking money from oh. my fucking parents' <laughs> account <laughs> for like three or four weeks. <gasps> and like oh, I don't remember god. the exact amount it was, but it was like it was four digits. 
<laughs> and my dad was so. Uh, yeah. No. And he was like, Bro. "Where the fuck did you find it?" Uh, he canceled I, it, and I'm like, I, but "I've never gotten." To pay like the two thousand. Uh, yeah, and I never got the biggest, and I had the biggest beating of my life. Like I was like, "Oh my god." Oh my god. Right. I think I think the bloodline would end there. Yeah. That yeah. Kid, I mean, like, yeah. What yeah. the fuck? I remember, like, I don't know how it got resolved because obviously I was very young when it yeah. happened. But like, by the time I realized it, I was like, "Oh, the Super oh. Mario Bros. Yeah. Ring tone is Thank gone you for from my phone." You, you paid two thousand dollars for the Super Mario Brothers ringtone. It was like at least a thousand dollars. Oh my god! Oh my god! Yeah, so uh, yeah, don't don't do that. Is uh, is the thing? But like, Yo, but you were the cool kid in school for like a for, for like about a day. for about three weeks. Yeah, I was the cool kid in school that had the Super Mario Brothers ringtone. Man, I, I and kids were like, "Yo, where the fuck did you get that?" I, I'm not telling. Dude, I, you know what's fine? Fine. I'm trying to, have you ever been scammed? Yeah. You have? I was, I was, I was thinking Can about the same thing. I was like, have I ever been I'm, scammed? Yeah, I'm trying to recall if I've ever been scammed. Yeah. I don't yeah. think I've ever been scammed. Luckily, that was the only time I got scammed. Thank yeah. God. But uh, yeah, that was uh, scary. Oh, God. Yeah, because uh, I remember the first time, like, I, I was also a kid, right? Yeah. I didn't, I didn't. Well, that's even, the, the main target is kids. Yeah. And elderly people. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. That, that, that's a huge scam. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's like, I could not even perceive, like, the, 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 like, the, even notion of being scammed. And I remember we, <laughs> this is, oh my God, this is like unlocking a memory right now. Mm. It's, I, I remember we got like some spam mail. Mm. I now realize it's spam mail. Mm. But at that time I had, I got this mail in and I remember it's from, it was from Reader's Digest, right? Okay. It's, I don't know what that is, but it was, I remember it was a company, the company was Reader's Digest. Uh -huh. And it was, it was uh, a mail that said, you have, uh, you have passed the next stage of this raffle that you've entered. Mm. And I'm like, what? We've entered a raffle? Yeah, yeah. And we're past the next stage? I'm like, what? <laughs> Mother, we are about to be rich. And it was just like, we, cause like- I didn't they, enter they, a raffle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, could, I, I didn't even think that we didn't even <laughs> enter a raffle. <laughs> yeah, I, I, the question. I was, did, we, did we enter it? No, 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 no. I won, I won, I won. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so I saw like the prize money and I saw that we'd enter the, that we'd enter the next stage. The prize money was like thousands and thousands of, of course, dollars yeah. or something mm. like that. Um, but there was this, this raffle, this competition was like several stages, mm. right? And mm. I remember the second stage only had like a few more participants left. And to get to the next stage, you had to buy one of their books that was like 25 pounds or something like that. <laughs> and I was just like, mother, we've already had zero investment in this raffle. We have reached <laughs> the next stage. May I procure your credit card for just a moment? <laughs> While I buy this other book. Mother, you know what they say, <laughs> yeah. you gotta spend money to make money. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and so, and so I think my mom, like, I, I, I don't know, I think my mom just went with it, one, because I just seemed happy, yeah. and two, just as a learning experience for me, right? <laughs> so, this, book, this fucking book gets sent to my house, and of course- At least you got a book. Huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. I got yeah. a book about, from Reader's Digest, about the fucking architecture of castles in Edinburgh, or some shit oh, like that, right? <laughs> <laughs> and then, so we get the book. Yeah. Then we get a note with it saying, "Congratulations, you've reached the next stage of. You've been oh, successful in reaching wow. the next stage in the raffle. Uh, to reach the next stage, you have to buy two books." And I'm like, "Oh my god, I'm like, mother, we are too far <laughs> in now." To say no. Okay, oh, no. there are only a few participants left, and I think. I think she let me go for about two more stages. Oh, oh no. I was just like, mum, we're too deep into this to like give up now, mum, please. Wait, how many please. books did you end up with? I saw we had like fucking five or seven books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, at least she got, got seven books about bubbly castles. Oh my God. And then, and, then she, and then she was like, no, I just, go on, you're a fucking idiot, okay? Do not do this again. Do not fall for this again, okay? And I was just like, what do you mean they were lying, mom? We're almost there. We're this close. We're this close to winning the grand prize. And that was my first scam that I ever fell for. Damn, um, I, hey, at least you got seven I, books out yeah, of it. I, I got seven books out yeah. of it. Though. So, so one of the main reasons people, that, you know, people uh, that scams are so successful is people don't talk about it when they have been scammed. There's yeah. a lot of shame around it. Like yeah, people yeah. are too ashamed to admit they've been scammed. Oh, yeah, yeah. Which makes sense, right? Because if, if you've been scammed out of a significant amount of money where it affects your life, then yeah. Mm -hmm. I, you know, you would feel stupid, mm, but yeah. you know, that's valid, but you, you know, you still should talk about it because the main reason they keep getting away with it because people don't know about it. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, okay. There've been countless occasions where between the ages of like 16 to 
even like now i've like there have been some emails that are so goddamn convincing and good yeah and came at like because obviously they send these emails out in mass yeah right yeah and obviously every Anchorage now and then they'll AIB send you an email at the exact right time when it, you just you you're like huh you know like for example like a, an amazon refund scam yeah, yeah maybe you just hit the refund mm -hmm. button and then a mass scam right. was set out left, just by half yeah. right? yeah, yeah. And then you're like, huh, oh, well, I, I guess I have to claim the money now? Okay, yeah. that's weird. So you kind of fall for it, right? But then obviously the more you look into it. Mm. Yeah, I, I've nearly fallen for scams like that a few times. I remember there was one where it was like sent to do with, um, uh, my, I, I had just submitted my tax refund. Pretty easy to figure out, right? Yeah. Figure out April or whatever yeah. in the UK. And it looked really convincing. The website was really legit. Everything looked good. I typed in most of my information. I hadn't hit send or anything. And I thought, Second, let me go back and have a look more at this email in depth and saw that like, like you know the easiest way to tell is sometimes the sender mm. yeah has a shit email yeah but even then like there was that one youtube scam that went around for a, do, you, do you remember the scam that yeah was i remember big? the scam where it was like a, it was from like you, google uh something at google.com yeah 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 and if something's from google.com uh that's normally like the actual google yeah. services yeah and for some reason youtube allowed uh, google and youtube allowed this to happen where they were like your adsense is going to be terminated and that's obviously like wow this is that's fucked up yeah. this is this is something that is very uh, pressing and it was the way that they had worded it was something something along the lines where it, it sounded believable because i f fell into that category of whatever they were saying and i was like what yeah. the fuck i nearly fell for that one too I was like on the Google Messenger chat talking to this fucking weirdo trying to scam me. Yeah. Mm. Nearly fell for it, but didn't. Damn. It's yeah. hard, man. No matter how screwed on your head is, man, you can- They, they, the right, will, they will always find- They're just getting ways. more and more clever. The, the, yeah. right, the right mm. scam at the right time, can, yeah. you could fall for it. Like you might think you're like ironclad and you'll never fall for anything, but yeah, yeah just the right timing. I'm like, bro, you will be cool. Well, like I've YouTube has for a, a couple. fucking massive problem right now. With, like, I don't know if you guys replies. have noticed it. One of them was a Discord one. On like every reply and one was for every Steam fucking one. comment, it's I so swear. Fun. It's like, it's always the, the first reply. Fucked. And it's always I you. I hate that. You know? <laughs> yeah, it'll be like, it's, it's, it's always you. It's always you. It's, yeah, yeah. it's always you, but usually it's like slightly misspelled. <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's the Anamu man. <laughs> but it's the same profile picture. Yeah. It's like, oh yeah, it's probably him. Yeah. This video is sponsored by Messi. Guys, have you heard about Vessi? Vessi. Absolutely, I have. Because I'm wearing them in literally everything. If you look at any <laughs> pictures of recently, I'm always wearing Vessis. That's not a joke. We fucking love them. Connor yes. only buys one pair of shoes and they're goddamn Vessis. Joey loved Vessi so much, he wore it to my wedding. I am not lying. That is true. <laughs> I wish we were joking. <laughs> <laughs> but boys, have you seen my brand new pair of Vessis Ooh. right here? Look at this. Boys, I gotta admit, Vessis are probably the Fresh. best everyday shoe I've ever owned. The waterproof is extremely handy and they're durable and the breathable material is just awesome. They're also really easy to clean. I would get well. some oh, if yeah, I wasn't You know guys, it's coming to winter now in like, Japan and we're getting hell. a bit more rain. That's why True. it's so convenient to have the 100% waterproof shoes from Vessies. Plus, did you know guys, Vessies is made out of a material called Dimatex. Do you know what that is? What is no, that, Joey? It is. it is a dual climate knit material that keeps you cool in the summer Ooh. and warm in colder weather. It doesn't Ooh. feel like it should be waterproof, but it is, gentlemen. And best of all, they're really lightweight. Wow. Amazing. Vessies are the perfect gift for under the tree and for your feet. Check out their holiday sale at vessies.com slash trash taste. Get the style and size you want now before they sell out. If you miss the sale, use code trash taste for 15% off your entire order. This episode is sponsored by Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll Games launched this newest again. RPG, Let's The Eminence go. in Shadow, Master of Garden. This anime RPG is based on the popular light novel and new anime television series, The Eminence in Shadow. Ooh. Guys, did you know that it's actually an isekai? Of course it is gone. Oh, okay, God. it's, it's not course, actually, is that why you're so happy? No. no, it's not actually, it's actually <laughs> genuinely good. It's one of the best isekais airing this season because you know what? Okay. It parodies itself. It oh. knows not to take itself too seriously. The game features key characters from the novel and manga, including Shadow, Alexia, Alpha, Beta, and the rest of the main cast from the series. You can enjoy high quality graphics and scenes directly from the anime. Dynamic action with fully animated skills and team-based combos, multiple PVP modes, and co-op raid events. You can decide the ideal team composition from the various roles, such as tank, attacker, and supporter right, to create the perfect balance for each challenge encountered. By logging in every day, you can earn up to 2,100 Phantasm Gems. Ooh. And guys, don't forget to join us for the Holiday Rhapsody event starting on December 2nd. The game is available worldwide, except for East Asia, Belgium, and Netherlands, unfortunately, and is available on iOS and Android and coming soon to Windows. So if you want to check out the game for yourself, then click the link down in the description below and thank you to Control for the sponsor of this episode. To the show. You know what's so funny that you mentioned um, 
uh, the Edinburgh Castle stuff. So I, yeah. I did this video, right? So obviously there's um, there's been a bunch of uh, sponsors. There's a few of them that are on YouTube a lot. You see them mm. all the time. It's like, you yeah. can become a lord. Oh, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to name names because I don't want to get in trouble. Um, yeah. <laughs> and there's actually a ton of websites that do this. Mm. You know, they're like, hey, if you if you buy our thing for 60 bucks, you get a one foot plot of land and yeah. you're now a lord. Right. And so I was like, I was like, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> it's like, that's, My British sense is a tip. Right? <laughs> I'm like, that doesn't quite sound right. So I, I wanted to do this video where I was like, I actually want to become, like, get a title. Right? Yeah. So I started looking into it more about how, how one goes about it. Right. And it was interesting because I, you know, TLDR, um, the way that the laws work in Scotland is that you, you can't transfer one square of a, a one square foot of a land to someone. That's yeah. not, it's too small, and you can't even even if they they say they do, you don't mm. actually own that land. It's yeah. it's it's a dedicated souvenir plot. So, uh, you know, they're kind of saying, hey, yeah, you own this land in our heads yeah. and in our database, mm, but yeah. like legally. Whoever bought that land still owns it because you can't you can't transfer land like that. It has yeah. to be transferred mm. wholly. Yeah. Um, also, they change the laws on how titles work. So yeah, in Scotland you can you can actually still get titles, but I believe it's only like um, baron. So you can become like you can be like a baron of uh, high water. Or yeah, that's, it depends on the name of the place and stuff. You can actually get those titles because those are titles that have existed before, and so they change the rules where you can't. It used to be where the, the title would transfer with the ownership of the land. Right. Mm -hmm. But now that that's not how it works. So you can't transfer the title with the land. You can only buy the title off of someone else. And then there's no guarantee that you can actually get it recognized, even right. if you buy it off someone. It's really weird. Right. Um, I'm not 100% on all the legal legality of it. It seemed extremely complicated. And if you actually wanted to get one of these titles, um, there's a few ways you can do it. You can actually buy a title, but it would it would be somewhere in the range of a hundred grand. Yeah, that sounds about right. right. <laughs> Which would make sense, because yeah. they're very limited, yes. right? And people yeah. want these, like rich motherfuckers want to be like, the Baron of Slogwater, <laughs> yeah. you know? Like, and, yeah. um, and there's another whole thing where you, you can actually get a title if you own a historical piece of land in Scotland. Yeah. And then you have to submit it, but then also, even if you own this land, you still need to be of it was something along the lines of you need to be of someone of notable stature and of of good standing and merit. Yeah. So you can't just be some random dude, buy a plot of land and submit it. You need to be right. verified on Twitter. Obviously. You need to be verified and have a Twitter blue eight. <laughs> <laughs> so this whole system is like extremely complex yeah. and they don't even, I'm pretty sure from my knowledge, they don't even give out Lord titles anymore. That's not yeah. like, a, like the only way to get a Lord title. Is um, to be born into it, right? There's, so there's very few, there's less and less. Yeah. They, they, so I think from my understanding, and again, I didn't look too much into that part. But yeah, it's literally, I think, generational has to be gifted to you yeah. by the yeah. crown. But they used to sell them back in 1920, <laughs> which is actually when they used to trade hands the most, and then they right. stopped that. So yeah. you can't do that anymore. Right. So pretty much the, yeah, there's pretty much no real, hey, you can definitely get one. It's yeah. very, very, I, again, I'm not an expert. This is like two hours of research. <laughs> You pretty much cannot get it. I'm just right. gonna say it like that. You you can get yeah. it. Very 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 difficult. You can get yeah. it, but 99.9% of people cannot get it. Right. So ultimately, I, I just thought about this thing and I was like, <laughs> damn, this thing suck. <laughs> you pay like 80 bucks <laughs> just to have somebody write, oh, Lord Gaunt. You it's are like, you are a lord. You are a lord. <laughs> under under whose authority? <laughs> yeah, under you are. And they, again, I mean, to, be fair, yeah. to be fair, if you look at all the fine print and all these websites, they do say it. But the marketing for a lot of these stuff and the way yeah. they get like a lot of influencers and stuff to push it is yeah. they're not like that. Yeah. They say, yeah, you get to you get a one square plot. Like, no, you don't. Yeah, you do not. You cannot go to the land registry and say, hey, I own this one square foot plot of land. Isn't that, no, isn't that also similar to the services where it's like you can buy one square foot of the moon as well? Yeah, that's yeah. bullshit. Well, too. that's, no that's like the moon. Land. The moon in space counts as like international. Yeah, yeah. kind of no like no one, no, no one yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you know, it's just like I don't know. I just thought about. It. I'm like, oh, man, I don't get why people are still promoting it when like obviously it wouldn't make sense. Obviously, you can't be a lord. Obviously. This is not how it works. Well, we we know this because we I guess we grew up in like the UK, right? So yeah. it's just like something sounds sus because there aren't that many lords in the UK. I yeah, mean, but yeah, yeah, and I guess also you could argue, well, no, come on, it's for the novelty, it's for the yeah. fun of it. And it's mm. like, well, just spend five minutes and just make a stupid certificate, like, and just give it to someone. Because <laughs> that whole thing is like, it's a great gift, give it to someone. It's yeah. like, well, I mean, 
I don't know about that. <laughs> like, is it really? Like, <laughs> yeah. I, you know, a lot of them, they maybe have some claims like, I'm, I'm not trying to call them out. Mm. I'm, I just think that I just don't get why this is a thing. I yeah. just don't understand mm. how it's big. Yeah. Because like, you see it quite a lot. It's every recently. YouTuber promotes yeah. it. And I'm like, this, yeah. what the fuck? This is garbage. <laughs> like, again, I haven't, I'm not naming names. So don't get in trouble. Um, there's a lot of things. And there's yeah. some, some of them are like, oh, well, they want to offset it. Right? So Chris is in there. like, well, we, we plot a tree. It's like, yeah. okay, fine. Maybe you do. And it's like, I, I, don't, I don't. There's no way to verify yeah. that. Yeah. I, I, I don't know if you do. Yeah. And, you know, even then, quite the, you come into the question of like, oh, I, don't, I don't know. How, how valid is that? Is that really helpful? Is that like, I could just go and plant a fucking tree. Yeah. <laughs> I just go, I could. Here's a little fun thing for you. Established titles is required by their refund policy. They refund you. But... As soon as you order anything, they are they already send you the paper and everything. It doesn't go out of their database. So I literally bought like five different plots of land and I refunded all of them because their refund policy states that they have to. And I still get like I have like five different title things for for nothing. So I scammed them for there are shitty plastic and paper. So that's fun. Go ahead and do that. It'd be fun. Just let me do it. I can throw yeah, some yeah. fun. What if suits. you ask to plant it yourself? Will I they let like, you do it? Yeah. Like, pull them out, being like, okay, I, I own this land. You can't, 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 can't defy me, by the way. Yeah, I'm a lord. Yeah. Let's not get into carbon offsetting. That's a whole bag of worms, a can of worms that we're not even going to get into because yeah. that's a whole other thing that is questionable at best. But yeah. I just, I just, for me, it's like every now and then spon some sponsors like this come around on YouTube where everyone is, seems to be promoting them. Mm. And it's like, no does, no, does nobody it? just think yeah. like, what are we actually promoting here? Like, yeah. this is actually just got like crap. Like, yeah, I don't, you know, no, no, I, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. They're not doing anything wrong. I'm just saying like, I'm like, <laughs> I just don't get it. Like, yeah. I, to yeah. me, I'm like, what is this? No, I get it, I get it. Especially, it's, it's hard, especially if it's like a new product that you just, because th this is like a something like this is a very weird product, right? And sometimes, yeah. sometimes weird products, some of them can be legit, but some of them just don't make sense yeah. at all. It's yeah, it's it's weird. It's a gray area. We, I don't fucking know. We try to like take on as much sponsorships. That I'm not just, trying to get sued, by the way. That's yeah, just yeah. my. Mo I'm just trying. <laughs> yeah. to, I'm just saying. I I think it's not very good. Yeah, and no, I, I get it. I, I mean, that's why yeah. uh, we don't promote them. Yeah. I think, yeah, and, and I feel it's like, especially like the pressure is on for creators as well when they see other like maybe notable creators or like the sheer amount of creators. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Sponsoring, and they're like, well, if they're, if they're getting sponsored by this many creators, it must be legit. We're, yeah. we're, we're not above uh, taking stuff that is backfired on us, right? We, we've taken stuff that we've not, maybe not liked in the past, right? <laughs> I think every YouTuber every has. Every creator <laughs> learns the hard way. Of course, um, yeah. You know, I just... It's not that I'm. I, w I would never give a single credit shit for promoting it because mm, I yeah. just think that's the game. Mm. Um, I just I'm just shocked at how widespread it is. Mm, right. And I'm like, this seems like such a niche thing that is so obviously not true. And I'm like, <laughs> I just don't understand. I, I, it blows my mind. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Again, I'm not trying to call anyone out. I know any yeah. YouTubers have promoted them. Bro, I don't give a fuck. It's yeah. Part of, it's part of the game. I'm just. You know, what is? Going back. Hard, yeah. Going back to the YouTuber scam thing. Um, the YouTuber comments scam thing. I just got an interesting email the other day. All right. So, okay. one of my fans saw that uh, saw that oh, no. there was a scammer on my comment section that you know had replied to every comment saying you've won X or you have won a raffle or something mm. like that. So he decides, what if uh, what if we try to what if what happens if I try to pursue this and see and see mm. how deep the rabbit hole goes? Oh. That's dangerous. Right? Yeah. So. <laughs> Uh, so I get this email just like detailing what like the messages he sent and the messages that he got back and everything like that. So there was, there was this guy impersonating me on one of my comment section. It was it was kind of like a bot and uh, the bot just said, you have won a PS5. Please contact this. Yeah, you please contact this email for more details. <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, and so. He doesn't. He doesn't send me the entire conversation through. He just the highlights. Yeah, he sends me the highlights right, of nice, just. Nice. So they get to a stage where he's talking to this person on WhatsApp, <laughs> right? Oh my God. That's how you know you're oh being scammed. Yeah. Yeah. If you're on WhatsApp, you're being scammed. Yeah. Yeah. But frankly, I, I, my mom, I'm like, man, mom, are you scamming me? Like, just, WhatsApp is feels like you're being scammed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so this guy who's impersonating me, right? He's he. He's, he doesn't even name himself Gigguck. So it's my profile picture and everything, right? Yeah. But, but the name is 
the Giguk. The one and only. The one and only Giguk. How are you gonna let him get away? So it's not Giguk. It's the Giguk. The actual Giguk. Holy shit! Fuck. Yeah. I better take the Sea Dog. Yeah. Fuck. I've already taken the enemy, man. So I'm good. Joey's. Joey's. I'm already on top of him. Already on the ball. But like, it gets it gets interesting when you know you you get past him. He he plays along for like a little bit, and then he just kind of calls him out. This guy's turning out of my way. This seems like a scam. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a bit nervous about this. Now tell me if this sounds like me at all. Um, you don't have to doubt the process. <laughs> I have vowed to God never to cheat or let anyone down on this. And I have keep this promise for so long without disobeying the Lord our God. <laughs> That sounds like you. Yeah, does, does, it, it, does it sound this is like, like this is monk god speak? <laughs> is, this, is this? Please tell me that's in all caps. It sounds like it needs to be in all caps. Yeah. Okay, okay, carry on. <laughs> and it's just like beginning to get agitated because it's an insult. Tome me by suggesting this is a scam, and then then he goes. Uh, please pay to these methods as soon as pot uh, as soon as possible. Bitcoin deposit. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Zelle. I don't, I don't even know what Zelle is. Zelle. And it's just, yeah, that's uh, and, and it's just like, I'm, I'm doing this to encourage my fans out there to achieve their dreams and also encourage them. If With you, a PS5? Yeah, <laughs> if you don't me, then you can go. I can't force you to trust me. <laughs> What I will stand for to achieved been unreal. <laughs> Wait, could you repeat that? Yeah. Could you repeat that last sentence? Okay. What I will stand to achieved been unreal. Been unreal? Yeah. Just, God, I want this to be a copy paste. Uh, hello, so I want this just, to be a new copy yeah, paste. I guess. Second yeah, what biggest. I will stand to achieve because Bao is in Ohio. Bao doesn't follow me though. So sad. Like Imagine. <laughs> Yeah, what the, the fuck the, is this? I'm also pictures a water like tuber and she doesn't even this follow PS5, me. Oh, so sad. But I think it's just, it just looks like someone's eBay listing, basically. <laughs> you ain't first, honey. So, uh, Bowles and who, who, Bow lives in Ohio. She's the biggest bottom. The She's literally a whale. Oh, that was, I did. People are waste scammers time. Oh, yeah, yeah. She's you're, so you're, the, you're the true hero. We <laughs> can't beat that. Just get enraged. Just makes me makes me smile. Yeah. <laughs> Do you doubt me? Do, Do you, you doubt me? Do you doubt me? Be it unreal! <laughs> I swear to my heart, our God, our Whales Lord follow and Savior, rivers? God, no, they do not. <laughs> I'm small whales, maybe, but the, you, 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 not you, big you, you, whales you, like Bow is. Bow is a little whale. So taken funny. On what side? Like, I don't know. Yeah, because yeah, Bow is too it's big for river. Like, People will always find new innovative ways to scam well, him. Yeah. That. But Beluga just wells like, with their squishy this foreheads. Shit. And then there's this, well, that's the thing. Like a lot of these scammers, like we've talked about like Jim Browning before and how he's yeah. exposed like scammers in India and stuff like that. But I'm just like, I, I don't know too much about it. Is there just like not enough laws preventing this stuff? In this that game's country? really relaxing. Not enough enforcement. Oh, enough enforcement? Mm. Okay. I think generally like the enforcement is lax. And you know, in, in other countries, um, yeah. some, some areas police can be, uh, you know, yeah, maybe they can look the other way if you give them a little cheap payment or two. Right. I think a lot of places they struggle with, you know, because these places make so much money. Yeah. So it's hard to, you know, to, to get the government to keep taking them down. And also yeah. they, to be fair, they, they do get taken down fairly often, but then they just move. Like it's yeah. really easy to just make this operation anywhere. Right? Yeah. You just get an office space with PCs, boom, you're set up. Yeah. yeah. And you probably make enough money to cover out any yeah, she's a blue whale. locating costs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's tough. I guess so. Easy money. Easy. Well, like. Ha. So, Bao, uh, if you remember her song from a while back, 52 Hearts, that's a uh, spin off. That's basically like a little. Uh, it's supposed to be a, a play on word of uh, 52 Hertz because there is a specific whale called the 52 Hertz whale. It is a blue whale that has a unique call, and only one of them have been, you know, recorded. So it has a mutation, most likely. So because whales only respond to a certain frequency of their own call, this blue whale is unable to communicate with its other, its, like, brothers and stuff. It cannot communicate with its family. So it's known as the most lonely whale. And that's what Bao is 
she calls herself the 52 hertz whale VTuber. So technically, Bell is a blue whale, uh, considering that she's basically basing herself off of that whale. So she's a blue whale. So yeah, she only stays in the ocean. Meanwhile, I am the river spirit. And I am 7 million years old, because that's how long ago rivers started to really form. So, yeah. How many times have you been like, have you ever like talked to someone who's like, <laughs> phoned you on like, like a scam? Uh, I don't know what they're called. Like, like call scammers? Call, call, call scammer or something well, like that? I mean, I used to do a lot of videos calling them. Oh yeah, calling. you did, yeah, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and they were yeah. just getting raped. But like, they're, they're really, so, dude, they're really good at knowing- Thank you, United We Ghost, for the follow. So I really appreciate it. Them. Right, they right, have, right. If they even have a feeling that you're not like participating, they just so you, they, that's why you see all the people who call them up on Twitch and stuff and who make content. They, dude, they really play the long game. They like <laughs> they are on. It's like Kit Boga. If you ever seen his stuff, no, he's no. on calls sometimes for like eight hours oh, on one call, <laughs> just fucking with them, like leading Jesus. them on the entire time. Right. And then finally, at the end, they get that big payoff yeah. where he finally reveals he's been fucking with them. Yeah, and they lose it. And it's like hilarious because you're just like, the dedication is unreal. Right. Yeah. But dude, I didn't have that. Mine were always at like two minutes because they realized I was fucking with them. Right. Yeah. Like right away and they blocked my number. So I had to keep making new numbers constantly and then right. calling them back. And then they would just hang up right away. Mm. Fucking hell. Eight hours? Wait, who is this guy again? Kit Boga. Yeah, his stuff's really good. Yeah. Okay. You, you've definitely maybe seen one or two of his videos. Yeah, Kit Boga's really fucking funny. crazy. Really good at it. He pretends to be a grandma with a voice changer. Oh, yes. I, I, I meet the ocean. Yeah, I, I have think seen I have that. seen. I guess seen technically, that's, that's pretty convincing. Like he's yeah, pretty yeah, yeah, good. yeah. Um, so yeah, he does that for like all day on stream. Shit is unreal. It's Jesus Christ. It's insane. Yo, that's an easy eight-hour stream, man. Yeah, yeah. honestly, <laughs> it's kind of crazy. Yeah, I mean, content's it's, just making itself. I, I, it's it's awesome. I mean, anything that you can do to waste these dudes' time, and then hey, you can also mm. get paid off of it. Hey, yeah, fuck yeah, yeah, man. yeah, fuck Why yeah, not? fuck yeah, man. I want I want the uh, the amount of people getting paid to fuck over scammers to outweigh people being scammed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're, we're, too, we're so far away. From that it. would be a perfect society, wouldn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, like, yeah. It, it's um, it sucks. I mean, hopefully the the they get better enforcing the laws over there. Yeah. Fixing it. Mm. It sucks. But you know, the people who <laughs> live there also hate these fuckers. Like they- Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've, the I've local seen population hate so many these, people, local people assholes. just be like, these people do not represent us. Yeah, because they give them a bad name. Mm. Yeah, yeah, exactly, right? exactly. But in America, it's really bad as well. I know every American friend I have, they're like, yeah, I got like four scam calls today. It's like, what? Yeah, really? yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You get zero. In, the UK, in America, you get a shit ton in of the scams. UK, you get like, okay, the, the weirdest thing I find is like the scam calls where it's not even a person on the other end. It's robot. You, you, yeah, you just this get a, an automated message. Well, you just get an yeah. automated message, right? You um, have one, a PS5. So, so, yeah. so, okay, here's the thing though, right? That obviously to any sane person or any normal person, like, this is fucking dumb. I'm obviously yeah. not going to call this out. But in their mind, if somebody falls for that and they call back, this is your perfect candidate to scam. Because yeah. A fucking stupid ass robot just told them that they're going to jail and they're believing it. Right. Mm. So now this is like perfect. This is the exact kind of person who will then give me his bank information. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's the problem is that we often think it's like, and that's where the shame comes into it, right? Is that it's so stupid in, in, in our mind that you could fall for this that then these people feel so ashamed they don't want to say anything. They don't mm. want to get help or have, you know, or admit to it. Yeah. So, you know, there's that cycle where I think. People need to be a bit more, be a bit more sympathetic towards people who get scammed. Mm. I think because um, I just feel like if it's going to improve in the conversation around, it's going to improve because nobody talks about it. Nobody talks that they oh, I nearly fell for a scam. Yeah. No one wants to admit that they well nearly fell for something. Mm. So I feel like the dialogue needs to be a bit more open. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can't, I can't remember the last time I fell for a scam, <laughs> but I remember it was it was it was a phishing email. Um, mm. Kind of kind of like very similar to you. And then I've realized it was. It, you, you know some moments where you you do something and it's like immediate, instant yeah, immediate yeah, yeah, immediate yeah, yeah. immediate 100%. regret like yeah, yeah. <laughs> like playing chess you move the queen and you just immediately yeah. realize you've blundered <laughs> as soon as you like let it go oh, yeah that happened to me as soon as i pressed the submit button to like my password and emails Oof. and luckily i because i submitted it because i realized it right away mm. i managed to get time to like change everything like yeah. right then and mm. there um, because God forbid having my username and password is something that is very, <laughs> you know, as, as my job has gotten more and more on the internet, my username and password has gotten only more and more secure, you know? Yeah, yeah of course. As it's gone it on because, to. yeah. Man, I, <laughs> you, imagine you spend your whole fucking life uh, being smart. You have all these passwords that are rock solid and then this fucking 
company just leaks all your information anyway. Yeah. <laughs> Passport number, full address. You're like, well, fuck. All right. Well, we're oh, probably some yeah. asshole didn't want to pay for more security. Yeah, changing identity, I guess. Yeah, because there's been a few cases where like full on, like full passport house address have been leaked. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. Was that was it? The insurance database in America, I can't remember which one, leaked like tens of millions of like mm. passport numbers, house yeah. addresses, full on information. Yeah. It's like, wow, you really couldn't have uh, really couldn't have been just a Cinnabon account or something. It had to be <laughs> had to be the one that really mattered. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, stuff. and it, and I feel especially as well like in Japan as well like that is just like the coal scammers especially like have mm-hmm. you heard of like stories about like the coal scammers? Like, oh man? yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. like the ones that like target old people and stuff. Yeah, and, like, yeah. they're fucking horrible because like it's called or they tell you the me me scam, mm-hmm. and it's essentially how it works for the most part is like uh, you know these like younger dudes like you know probably around like our oh age. you definitely saw about this in trash taste yeah yeah, yeah. Well, i've talked about it in trash taste but like yeah they call up these young guys uh call you know up these older people and they just go oh it's me it's me um i i'm, I'm in a bit of a situation right now i need Send you to money. dump yeah. in some money and it's unfortunate that these old people just think like oh well if they're comfortable enough to just say it's me yeah and they sound young. That must be my grandson. Yeah. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. I'm like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll dump in some money. And it got, in, it, and it became such a huge problem in like the late 90s and early 2000s. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. There was like millions, millions of bro. like elderly people's money just taken. I'm, I'm surprised that any of these banks will transfer anything, bro. This yeah. shit takes like a year to I do know. here. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know they are the, dedicated. Maybe that's man. why banks are so slow now, because yeah, they're yeah. like, yeah. how do we know you're not scamming? Yeah. <laughs> It's like, is, is, is this a legitimate part, business? Part of a cult here? Yeah. Is, is, is this you a think, legitimate <laughs> transaction you're making, or did you scan this off an old person? We won't know. I'll never tell. I'll never tell. Damn. <laughs> yeah, it's God, tough. Uh, yeah. It's depressing. Yeah, it is depressing. It is. But hey, fuck scammers, and uh, if you spend your time wasting a scammer's time, you are the real G, man. You are yeah, the real yeah, hero. Yeah, you are the unsung G. hero. Yeah. One, one scammer time waste, one like this. <laughs> <laughs> Since we're like now back in Japan, and you know, it feels weird mm. actually having like a weekly schedule, but being able to talk about things that we're not gonna be releasing like five months in the future. That's yeah. true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's yeah. only it's only like we're only two weeks behind nowadays. Yeah, so yeah. We're, we're we're talking about yeah. current events. I can talk about I can clown on Twitter, and it won't be like horrendously outdated yeah. when this comes <laughs> out. Man, you know? I, I had a trip to Kyushu with Chris, and yeah. uh, man, people are so chill in Kyushu. I yeah. feel like they were definitely way more chill than up north. You think? Oh, yeah. I feel like the vibes, people are just so friendly yeah. down south. Miyazaki, everyone was chatty. Really? Every time I went to a store or anything, everyone was really chatty, really yeah. nice. It was just good vibes. Kyushu is so fun. How are mm. the tourists there? I didn't see any tourists in Kyushu. Oh, okay, okay. Huh. Okay, so we we went to get the, um, uh, doing this video, and we had to go on the bullet train mm. to get to this point. Yeah. And it, we, there was like, so, didn't see any tourists in Kyushu. Yeah. Uh, I saw like a few tourists, international tourists that were in um, in like a, a very scenic place, Takachi Gorge or something. What is it? Takachi Gorge? Takachi Gorge? Takachi Gorge. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful gorge. Yeah. <laughs> really nice gorge. <laughs> there's a lot of tourists there. Yeah. But that was a very big tourist spot. Yeah. yeah. That was the only place I saw tourists. The only other time I saw a ton of tourists is like. I didn't. I, I keep forgetting this is a huge tourist spot. Yeah. So we're on the bullet train. No tourists. Next stop. No tourists. Next stop. No tourists. Stop in Hiroshima, dude. Oh yeah, it, dude. Oh. I, I've never seen so many white people get on. <laughs> I've, I, I, Hiroshima. I, as, as, a, oh. as somebody who's lived here, bro, I Hiroshima. I've never seen that many yeah. white people get on a train at once. Like it was. It was like it they all. All the white people came on single file the whole time for about like a good like two three minutes. Yeah. No Japanese people. I was like, holy yeah. shit! Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> I guess now that I'm thinking about it, you guys came at a time where it was right before the pandemic. Yeah, we came yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So right you guys before. haven't experienced like the full normal like, Japan. I didn't realize yeah. Yeah. how tourism invasion, how huge of a tourist destination was. Yeah, I didn't. I, I, I didn't I'm know finding that. this. Out. Obviously, I know people want to go and see the memorials mm, and, and yeah. uh, all the Anchorage history Center, behind that. I didn't realize it. Like, like, I saw more people getting on that train than I did in Tokyo. Which is like, I was like, whoa, this is crazy. I feel kind of bad now because. Um, like we've talked about on trash taste so many times. Mm. Like Japan, open up the borders, open up the borders, right? And then now that everything's mm. bustling and everything's like busy again, I'm mm. like, man, 
Fuck all the tourists, <laughs> man. They ain't the real no, ones. No, 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 they don't know the, the struggle, the, man. The frustration <laughs> I think that Ghana has is that it's annoying when, because you look like this, <laughs> and you look like this, and you look like this. Yeah. <laughs> Everyone just assumes you're a tourist, yeah. which is fine, but sometimes you're talking Japanese, and then they refuse to talk Japanese back to you. Yeah. <laughs> well, like we, we briefly touched on this last week. And yeah. I would like to say as a disclaimer, yes, that does make me a hypocrite. <laughs> like, I don't brother, care. You are the annoying <laughs> <Yeah>. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't, cause like, I, I just realized yeah. there, there's a few things, right? Some of my, like some, some of the spots I used to go, like, like to go to like, and have like a little bit of peace and quiet and stuff mm. like that. Now it's just like overrun. Like some of my favorite restaurants, like it's it's how dare they? Yeah. How dare they? How dare they? 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 How dare <laughs> tourists the, enjoy things in Japan? It's the little things, you know. Now when I want to go to some of my favorite restaurants, before I was like, like there was if I wanted to book a restaurant, there was like zero chance it would ever be full or rejected. Wow. And how dare restaurants be like having a bustling business now and not cater to my exact needs of when I want to? Be. What the fuck is up with that? So, how Japan? How dare Japan finally yeah, have a thriving yeah. economy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. How Dude, dare they? I mean, obviously, very minute complaints. Overall, I'm pretty fucking hyped that tourists yeah. are back. It feels more alive. Japan feels yeah, so much yeah. better. Oh, absolutely. But well, we went to we went to Golden Guy. Yeah. And um, mm. I Whoa. Golden Guy. I oh my Golden. gosh. I feel like it's got a certain vibe you can't really get anywhere else. So I think it's a cool yeah. vibe. I mean, I hadn't really gone much outside of pandemic. Yeah. And now- Because uh, most of the time it wasn't open. Yeah, now, yeah. I, I, so I, no, I was in like, I'd, I'd only really gone a lot during the later half of the pandemic. So yeah. I thought it was, it was great because yeah. there wasn't many tourists and it was chill. I, and I'd been to Golden Guy before as a yeah. tourist and I forgot how tourist heavy Golden Guy is. Oh, yeah, so Golden yeah. Guy, if you don't know what it is, it's basically this like- A big alleyway. Uh, it's, it's got like a hundred, Bunch of shops. 200, 300, some uh, insane amount of bars packed into a tiny, alleyway system and it's yeah. like there is tens and tens of bars on like a 20 meter strip mm -hmm. and they all hold maybe like four to six people max yeah sometimes even less mm -hmm. yeah and we were there the other day and oh my god <laughs> the amount of times you got recognized it was so awkward because golden guy's tiny right so yeah. it's like imagine there's four seats in a bar and then like three maybe like tourists or, f or fans who recognize us yeah. they try and come in and the owner's like Bro, what the fuck? There's only one seat. Get out. Like, oh, oh, God, no. Now we're being a nuisance because people are trying to come in and sit with us. Yeah. And it's like, no, you can't come in. There's only one seat. Stop, stop. It's also It also doesn't help that because these bars are so small, a lot of them don't have doors. Yeah, people And so are, people <laughs> can just kind of walk along yeah. and like look like into places. Yeah. Us, and they're like oh taking pictures God. of us from outside the bars and stuff, yeah. which, which is fine. Like we don't really care, but like we're yeah. just like, oh, we don't want to be a nuisance to like- it's, I felt bad for the bar. The, the bartender, yeah. yeah. It's, it's more like the bartender because we didn't want to like be a nuisance to mm -hmm. the bar, like the mm -hmm. bartender. A lot or of them like, are very quiet, yeah. very chill vibes. Yeah. But luckily, yeah. luckily though, the, the bar that we went to, the bartender was fun looking and having a good time. He was like, oh, that's hilarious. What's that? I actually used to love going there a lot to. Mm. Speak Japanese and, and kind of All try right, and prove my in. Japanese. It's yeah, fun for that. soon kind of enough. Yeah, it's it's it. just it's it's not so much bad as it's just a mentality shift, right? Yeah. Because for the longest time, Japan had just been the place where you know you you can just you didn't have to like think about getting recognized or something. You know, you didn't have to like that wasn't even like a thought in your mind. Yeah. You're just like, oh, this is just normal. And now. Especially going to like Alrighty. heavy touristy places. Thank you, Evo like Lee, very much for the follow. I really like appreciate that. it. You, like, your mentality has to switch to be like, oh, I'm in anime convention mode, kind of, where, you know, you, you kind of like. You, We're ready to take a picture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're kind of like, maybe, maybe someone here will know me. Yeah. Maybe not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, you know. I mean, I would still argue that it's still not as bad because for the most part, you know, Japanese people, if it's a full on Japanese person, they won't know who you are, right? Oh no, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so That's like, what... it's it's not like we're fucking getting swarmed every right. five no, no, minutes no, or anything no, no, like that. No. But just yeah. certain areas, yeah, get just recognized like, a lot more. Yeah, like, like I said, just certain Akihabara. very touristy areas. Oh my god, Akihabara. yeah, Akihabara. Oh, right, 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 I miss right. the I... days when I could go to Akihabara and not get recognized. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't been to Akihabara since Japan. So I, was like, I, I haven't been there. Good either. luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> that should be interesting. You're probably gonna get yeah. recognized at the station. Yeah. <laughs> 
I'll be fine. <laughs> I mean, I do, again, I don't mind. It's just different. Like yeah. it's 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 yeah. like I said, it's just mentality. But shift, in you know? general, I'm a lot really of happy planes around us. Things are there's one going like super fast. Being more the city active. feels alive again. Yeah, it feels yeah, like I think I'm the only slowly. one at this flight level. Yeah, it's though. crazy to think that it took this long. But like even bars are being a bit more, you know, uh, being a bit yeah. more lively. Yeah, up a bit more. It's kind of it's, it's cool to see. Mm. Yeah, just how like one announcement just kind of changed the game. Yeah, yeah. it's 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 like we I, should descend though. Like I complained last week about the taxi drivers. You know. Refusing to speak Japanese to me, but I will say, like taxi drivers also seem way more enthusiastic. Anchorage, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sure. yeah, well? yeah, yeah, yeah. They've 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 seen way more Request enthusiastic and way more like talkative and stuff like that. And yeah, I don't know. It, it seems and like not just Anchorage. like the tourist has reinvigorated the city, but even like the locals. You know, you go to the restaurants mm. and you, you go to businesses again, and oh, they seem, you know, they you know they seem way more. I guess alive. There's been know? a real big struggle right now because they're they're short on. Taxi drivers now. Mm. Oh, really? They yeah. need more taxi drivers. They need more uh, staff for hotels. Right. Apparently, flights yeah, are like fully booked. Oh, yeah. Into right. Japan, yeah. people are just like, I'm going. Yeah. I'm going. So yeah. I waited three years for this shit. Yeah. I'm going. Yeah. 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 And like, you know, it's, it's pretty flight crazy level now. Two and two but like, think about it in one sense that the biggest um, foreign tourist in Japan is, is China. Yeah. And China, they can't leave yet. Yeah, yeah. So it's gonna be. So we haven't actually bro, experienced like the, the full, yeah. the full yeah. wave, bro. When that, this, that's, this that's is just the, the first wave, you know. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. haven't met the final boss yet. But you you can know, tell, this dude, is I, this is phase one of the boss battle, guys. It's <laughs> interesting though. I will not. I will say, not only are flight prices like tripled, yeah. even more in some cases because they yeah. were like they were pretty much like free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, hotel prices in Tokyo, I've noticed have gone up. For oh, sure. Yeah. yeah, they've gone up quite a lot. I'm not surprised yeah. by that. Um, but like way more than I'm used to. Now I have to like recalibrate how much I think hotels are in Tokyo because mm. the, the demand has gone insane. Yeah. Um, but they still have quarantine hotels. Really? Do they? Yeah. There's um, I because you can you can tell which hotels quarantine because one it's an Apple hotel, <laughs> and two you'll see it's like cordoned off at the front and there'll be a security guard outside. Right. And they still have them. Right. Oh. I, and it's kind of like oh. Didn't realize we still needed quarantine hotels. I suppose we do. Apparently we do. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I, 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 interesting. Yeah. But I wonder. Yeah. I wonder why if the hotels are. Want that. I wonder the government must be paying an absurd amount of money. Oh, I'm sure. These yeah. hotels yeah. don't want them to keep being quarantine hotels. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah, I like now. Now that everything's busy and bustling again, it's kind of like, I've I've realized there are some places I don't want to go to as much anymore. <laughs> Like I, like yeah. Asakusa. Huh? <laughs> Asakusa? Yeah, I mean, yeah. I haven't been there, but one place I haven't. I ain't fucking going there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> one, one, one place I have been to is uh, Shibuya. Oh, and, oh yeah. Uh, oh, and God. I, I oh, bro, it's had forgotten how busy it gets, right? Shibuya. Because it's like, because I remember when I when I was a tourist visiting here, I was like, Shibuya is such a cool is gonna be area, you know. Packed. It's got so many bars and it's just Ugh. busy and bustling. It's because you know there's better areas now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like mm. now, as a local, it was still all right to go to when, like, when you know the country was closed because you had space and you had comfort. But I remember like this past like two weeks, I'd been to like Shibuya three times, mm. and like after the first time, I'm like. I fucking hate people. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I think I hate people right now. I just like, yeah, no, I've, I've noticed that. It's like, I, I went to Shibuya last week and like, it was like 2 p.m. on a Thursday. Yeah, And I remember random, like during yeah. the quarantine, it was like, you know, there'd still be people, of course, because it's Tokyo, right? But yeah. you know, it's like pretty quiet, you know, considering yeah. that I, I also experienced Shibuya before the pandemic as well. And now I went back and I'm like, I can't see the road. <laughs> Like I'm standing, oh, you, you get to fucking oh, uh, shipping sucks. across. Yeah, you get to the crossing. And it's like, it's like 2 p.m. on a Thursday. There's like 400 people on this side of the road. Another 400 on the other side. I'm like, where are you all from? Yeah. Where, where, where were you guys during the pandemic? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's, it's so combined with the- you know, And then combined with the tourists. Yeah, obviously yeah. tourists, right? And then yeah. obviously like saying Japanese people now are yeah. way more comfortable going out. Yeah. yeah so yeah, that's yeah. been going out. Yeah, dude, if you come to Tokyo as a tourist oh, and there's more than like four of you, bro, you, it's so hard to not like to just turn up to restaurants and stuff now, yeah. you have to book. Yeah. yeah. And so it sucks because some of them, you have to call up in Japanese. <laughs> Yeah, so if you don't have that one friend who can do that for you, you're pretty much just limited to. I'm sad. It does suck though. if you don't. I speak Japanese. Have someone or know someone conversationally at least Japanese. enough. Yeah, very limited with options mm -hmm. in terms of. Yeah, well, I, you don't realize you're limited. Right? Yeah, like, I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, actually, I just because I realized this because uh, when I was when I was walking to the uh, bar that we where I was meeting some people in in Shibuya, uh, I remember looking around. 
Uh, no, it wasn't Shibuya. Sorry, it was. Uh, where did I go again? I think I think it was like near Shinjuku, mm. right? Uh, so I was meet I was meeting a friend at the bar, and I remember walking. It was like very very bustling, and I remember there was one restaurant. There was one restaurant. You know, you normally see Japanese people lining up for a restaurant, right? And you have to like wait outside and stuff like that. So this one restaurant was like people were lining up for this one restaurant, but it wasn't Japanese people. It was all foreigners. And I looked up, and it was Itchy Ran Ramen. <laughs> oh God! I was like, no, no, no! I, I, that pains me I've every time never, I see that. I've never lined up for Itchy Ran. I refuse to. It I is was not, like, it is not lineup worthy. I was like, clearly not trash taste figures. You know, clearly, clearly, yeah. this is the one thing we've warned you guys against. And, and so, like, Gant strutted <laughs> right past those people with confidence, knowing fully well none of them will turn around. <laughs> itchy, and recognize Gant. Itchy, itchy Ran Ramen is a very popular uh, ramen chain in Japan. Yeah. It's very popular with tourists. Well, you can get uh, outside of Japan as well. Yes. So you can get it at What's Cali. I, okay, do that. I like it, you, right? Is it is it the best ramen ever? No. Um, would I line up for it? Certainly. Hell no. no. Uh, I think <laughs> it tastes good though. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's I, I like because you can make it spicy. That's about yeah. it. It's a five. It's it's, it's fine. It's, it's a five. <laughs> it's a five <laughs> out of 10. It ain't a 10. It, it ain't, ain't a 10. 10. Yeah, it's, it it's okay. 10. I mean, it's to be fair, uh, it, it is hard to find good ramen places because as well, people on reviews for some reason in Japan are super fucking brutal with ramen. They yeah, will, yeah, yeah, yeah. It is true. hard to find a ramen place above 4.2. Like, yeah. I don't think I've seen one for a very long time. Well, it's also- Most of them are like 3.8. Yeah, but it's also because like, again, like there's this kind of subculture in Japan of like ramen elitists, as I like to call them, where they're just yeah. like, they go, their job or just hobby is to just like, anytime they have free, they go to a fucking new ramen place, they try it out and then they just tear that shit out, right? Yeah, yeah. And it's of course with ramen places, you're not going to find that one place that everyone unanimously likes you know yeah. obviously with ramen some people like the shoyu mm. some people like the miso some people yeah. like the salt bowl okay. and it's so hard to detect so it's like just go in just like don't even look at reviews in my opinion with ramen unless it's like a two yeah. and then obviously don't go in there but i have the uh sort of opposite story to you mentioned uh, right. we were in um okayama station which is kind of like oh, i'm sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> how do you even describe <laughs> okayama it's, it's a, a big transit hub yeah um for shinkansen's a lot of trains stop there and uh that's why we were there we were like, well, let's get let's get dinner. So we were looking around the station, and we, we were going to go out of the station. We saw there was this giant restaurant, massive, right? Huge, could probably fit like hundred people. Yeah, Damn. pretty big, right? Mm -hmm. No one in it. No one. Holy no one. shit! Everything else was like pretty full. Yeah, right? there was like nobody in this restaurant. What the fuck? And we walked past this place twice, and later on we walked past again, like two hours later, and there was one elderly couple sitting in there eating. All right. What the so, hell? <laughs> and this thing looked pristine. Like, yeah. I, if I didn't know what it was, I would have walked in there gladly if sat down and mm. been like, this is a really, really nice place. Yeah. What do you think the food they serve? It's, it's a Japanese dish. Japanese dish? What do you think is a Japanese dish that some, not even like some Japanese people want to eat? And they had a whole giant ass restaurant for it. Think, think about an obscure type of dish. Uh, oh, is it obscure? Natto or something? No. Uh, well, I, I mean, I haven't seen it often. Yeah. Um, it was uh, intestinal hot pot. What's the, what's it uh, called? Oh, Motsunabe. Motsunabe. Uh, okay. It was Motsunabe. Right. And I was just like, fuck. I was like, Chris was like, no, we're absolutely not going in there. <laughs> so yeah, it's just intestinal hot pot. I, I actually like Motsunabe. <laughs> would you, okay, would you, would you like? But I would not, I would, would, it would never I be your first that, choice. It, it wouldn't yeah. be my first choice. And I would be sus as fuck if I saw a Motsunabe place that big. It was huge. Yeah. With huge. no one in it. It was it was so big for like what I thought yeah. was a even for Japanese standards. It's like yeah. you rarely hear Japanese people talk about this being their favorite type yeah. of food, right? Like there's a lot of other <laughs> stuff. I would I would look at that and my first reaction would be, someone's died in that restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> Someone has died from like badly like preserved you know food or like you know, that, bad that, dishes. That, 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 like that. that seems like a Maylene dish. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, it's just intestinal <laughs> hot pot. Yeah, um, and. It's actually really nice during the winter, but it's uh, okay, it, but, okay, uh, but but okay. also. Hear me out though. Would you ever choose it over normal Japanese hot pot? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Like it's, it's it, sukiyaki. It. Oh my god. That's, like that's like a once a year thing. For me, yeah. If that. It's just odd how I. It's I don't have an issue with it existing and being intestinal hot pot. I'm like, oh, oh how, what they eat intestines? That's so gross. I know they, I know they do that normally. Yeah. I Bro, was just surprised at I how would. large. This restaurant meat goes was fucking yeah. dedicated to that. It's it's so good for you. Yeah, because normally it's like there are hot pot dedicated that places. have mutton. Yeah. That maybe have mutton yeah, yeah. as one of the items, but like only mutton. That's yeah. weird. Maylene, do you like mutton? Best food ever in Fukuoka. Oh, but I fucking <laughs> knew it. Fuck.
Oh, okay, I was in Okayama. <laughs> <laughs> she said it's the best food ever. <laughs> Fuck right off, dude. No. Listen, I've had I've had in I've had the the cow intestine stuff. Yeah. At Chinese hot pot. It's fine. I wasn't I, I'm not like a fuss eater. I still like I refuse to eat it. I just think that like I'm Look, like, there are a lot of people who, who like it, yeah, but yeah. very who is few like people this? who are like, that's my fave. You know, there are some certain foods that I'm fine with eating. But I would never go out it's my not way the to order. Restaurant. You yeah. know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. It's not the chicken feet restaurant. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, can we just can we just have a chicken restaurant that also has chicken feet? Why are we specializing in this? <laughs> Why is it also specialized in like the one thing where it's like, yeah, you this know, it's polarizing. cool to eat. Yeah. yeah. And you know, it's yeah, but it's a polarizing. And also, I went like it's like going to a restaurant that's like, oh, we specialize in celery. It's like, yeah. oh, <laughs> not sure if I I like celery. I don't know if this is just not my, sure if yeah, I go I, though. Yeah. There's other dishes that I would. Like, I don't know, so we just went to a yakitori place in the end. Yeah, it was fine. <laughs> you, can, you can get mozza there as well Dude, if you wanted. Yeah, 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 it's fine. What? That's really weird. Yeah, I don't know. I'm curious. Actually, no. You know what? I, I shouldn't get the curiosity to get the best of me because I'm probably gonna get food poisoning. And then Chris wanted to go to an Irish pub. We went to an Irish oh, pub, of course and there was right. no one inside. Really? It was so awkward. <laughs> I, I mean, Why did he want to go to an Irish pub? I don't know. He just, I don't know. He wanted, the, he wanted a proper drink. Okay. A proper, okay. Drink. A proper drink. To say they serve pints, British pints. British pints. Oh, okay. Which I'm sorry. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. And they had brew dog. Okay, that was, that's a different point. It's not 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 for the views. You should have yeah. you should have gone to the Molten place just to see. I there was I don't think I could have paid Chris any amount of money to get in that restaurant. I think Chris would have stabbed me rather than going to the Molten It's Maltenoy. like how did you get food poisoning yeah. again? <laughs> Listen, I'm sure it's safe. I'm sure it's fine. I, I, it's just I was because yeah. it looked brand new. Mm. Really like nice, really clean, really like well kept, really yeah. nice branding, lots of spaces. I was just right. kind of like, what the f Maybe it's like what maybe it's this? like ultra expensive. It might be, but again, what, if you were ultra expensive, Motsunabe, which seems like a very niche food, why would you be in a train station? That's true. Yeah. That's normally train like, not to. There are some good places to eat in train stations. Don't get me wrong, yeah. but it's normally like the very affordable. yeah very affordable, very middle tier kind of fast because a lot of the time people are in a hurry, right? Yeah, so right. it's never the like really classy high end. Fancy places. So yeah. you feel like if you were going for that kind of market, you kind of would maybe market yeah. towards. Yeah, yeah. End. That's true. I don't, I don't know. And again, yeah. it made sense that the only people I saw in there were one couple. It was very elderly. One elderly couple. That's it. <laughs> well, I like, imagine, <laughs> why I, is this I, place empty? I've never met young Japanese people who are like, oh, I, my favorite food's Monson Really? <laughs> Mailing doesn't get, no, she said it's nice. I, don't, I bet she's bullshit. She's <laughs> supposed to be a contrarian. <laughs> No, she said. She's she like said, you with our candy. She, said it, she said it's the best food in Fukuoka. That's what she said. Fuck off. That's dude. what she just said. In in so there's a place in uh, Miyazaki which has the best beef in Japan, uh -huh. and uh, right. that is way better. I'll take that. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh yeah, because you went to a place that served like what was it like award-winning like the Beef Olympics, mm -hmm. right? So yeah, like, so uh, this, I'm sure if you watch Chris's video about it. Uh, there's the, Japan has a beef <laughs> Olympics, because of course they do. They do this with a lot of produce, actually. Yeah. And every three or four years, they have every, I don't know how it works. I assume every city brings their beef to the mm, table. They yeah. judge which one's the best. And, and Miyazaki, the prefecture has won like the last 15 years. Yeah. To be fair, it is fucking and it's, delicious. It's, it is it's good. Fucking it's delicious. so good. Yeah. Right. Um, and yeah, we had this course meal that was insane. It was just like, it was a Nobel Prize. So there's a Nobel Prize winners, and this is the meal they gave them. And I was like, <laughs> and I was like, thank God Chris is paying. <laughs> the first dish came out, and it's fucking caviar. And I was like, thank God this isn't my video. I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm not paying for this. Holy shit! I'd never had caviar before. Had it? You had never had caviar. You never had caviar? Why the fuck would I eat caviar? When would I have had it? <laughs> shit. There must so have been like shit. there must have been like one fucking fancy meal you've done where they just like added it in, added it. Yeah, like, in a, like, like, like a tiny amount. Like a tiny amount. No, no, no. no I'd never had it really? before. I had it and I was like, this is the most meh thing I'd ever tasted. Yeah. Um, I mean, did you have it by itself? Yeah. yeah. Oh well, that's why. Yeah, it was. It was. It was all right. It was fine. It just tasted like this. Tasted like it shouldn't cost this much. Actually, okay. So, in Japan, right? They don't have like the same. Uh, what's the word? <laughs> Uh, hmm, feelings <laughs> towards certain dishes and animals <laughs> that we have yeah. in the West, right? Right, right. So I went to this, uh, a friend of mine invited me to a course meal in this very, very fancy restaurant. All right. It was like a business meeting. In Tokyo. In Tokyo, right? And I didn't know anything about it. I just knew that they did like a uh, really nice uh, fusion food or something. I don't know. And um, 
there's a lot of weird foods that I've never had. Uh, yeah. I and there's a lot of stuff that I haven't had because I've heard it's awful and cruel. Like I've never had whale. Have you think have you had whale? I've had it once. Yeah, right. I've like, never had whale. Again, it's never just, gone out, it's yeah. disgusting. I've never gone out of my way to get this stuff. And I'm sure you didn't go out of your way to get it either. It's just like obviously no. in Japan, even though the rest of the world is like, we will not whale. Japan is mm -mm -mm. like mm -mm. No. <laughs> there's a lot of places in Hokkaido that openly sell whale stuff. Yeah. It's very yeah. normal, right? Mm -hmm. You know, it's a different cultural thing. And is it wrong? It's up for debate. I, you know, I think it's yeah. it's kind of fucked, but it's whatever. Yeah. My personal opinion. It doesn't matter. It's not my country. So go to this restaurant and we're having these courses. And again, I don't know what's coming. I can't read the menu. It's not coming. I'm yeah. like, I don't know what's coming. But, it's yeah. coming. but everything's been good. Okay. Yeah. Everything has been delicious. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, to the point where I'm like, Oh, this is going to cost too much. Fuck. <laughs> I'm going to have to pay for this. <laughs> and it was just like a client thing. Uh, not with my client. Someone was wanted to take me to some meal. And yeah. Around, I don't right, right. Right. So sitting there. And then the next meal comes out. It's like, it's like steak. It's like, oh, it's so good. Mm. And it's like, and then the next dish was, uh, it was like a, a beef cheek in turtle soup. And I was like, I'm just, I've never had turtle before, but I've right. never had the turtle. But, but it wasn't the turtle I wanted. I was hoping mm -hmm. the extinct turtle. Toy, you, were, you, were, you, you didn't want a tortoise. <laughs> you wanted the tortoise. Yeah. I wanted the extinct Galapagos giant tortoise. Yeah. <laughs> this was a common tortoise. So then I just felt sad. Yeah. Then I thought about like the, the Finding Nemo turtle and how cool Oh, was it Yeah, 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 yeah. It was like a turtle sauce, and I felt like, oh, is this turtle? Is it good? Is it, how do I feel about eating turtle? I didn't know how to. But again, yeah. it's, it's in front of me. I didn't know what it was, and I was just yeah. like, I just ate it. And then, I'm like, oh, that was turtle. I'm like, Apparently, it's really good for your libido. <laughs> I don't know. If that's that's, that's like every other like. That's like, every like Asian, rare, English, like English, rare English, Asian yeah. is, like is, ingredient. Is turtle common to eat? Support, yeah, it's common in Asia, but not in the West, right? We don't eat it. All. No, I don't think we eat it in the West. I'm my cheering for you. Like, yay, no, that we don't. It's, it's common in soups, right? In Japan, soups and like uh, yeah. yeah, and like nabe and stuff. Right, like hot right, pots yeah. But that wasn't the big boy. Oh, the next it gets weirder. Okay, dude, and this is where I was like, no, why did you bring this out? What? The guy brings out next up. I felt so bad. He brings out, he's like, all right, next dish we have, shark fin. And oh, like, no. 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 Because no. oh. I know, because shark fin is very cruel. Yeah. It right? Is. Yeah. And a lot of the Extremely. times they grab the shark, they, they just cut, cut the, fin the off, fucking fin off, throw and it throw back, it back and yeah, it can't right. like swim properly. Um, so I, it just dies. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. fucked. It's such a, like, fuck. fuck I was yeah. like, this is awful. I didn't know if I knew I was going to get shark, I wouldn't have fucking, I wouldn't have agreed to eat at this restaurant. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't want to eat the shark. So we, we get the food and I'm like, well, I may as well try right? Cause it's in front of me. Have so, you ever had it? No, never. No, okay, so I, this is your first time, right? No, where, where the fuck? Are you? I don't even know how to get shark in the UK if I wanted to have it. I don't even, I don't think it's <laughs> that's true. It. Yeah, like, that's it's like, true. It's cruel. I, just, I, yeah. just did, I never wanted to eat it, right? Mm. So I take a bite and I'm like, wow for all the suffering and all the anguish. This tastes like shit. Yeah. This tastes so fucking awful. It's extremely boring. It yeah. tastes like nothing. Yeah. I just, yeah. and, and in my head, I'm like angry. I'm starting to get angry. I'm like, this, this is what we, we kill these fucking things over? Yeah. Just this part of the fish? Yeah. And we don't use anything else? Mm -hmm. And we throw it back in for this? And it costs like mm -hmm. a million dollars for a fucking fin? What the fuck? We have failed as a so society. <laughs> <laughs> At least with the giant tortoise, there was records claiming how delicious it was <laughs> and how, how useful the water sack was. Yeah, you was it? We used every what part of the tortoise. We yeah. used everything in the tortoise. What is this? It was shit. And so, God, I was just so annoyed. The whole dinner, yeah. I was just pissed off. I was well, like, I, I think it was just like the unfortunate. I didn't of, know, right? I, yeah, I, no, no. I mean, it was. it's also like the unfortunate circumstances that shark fins I mean, you say it tasted like shit. That's fine because it's like people didn't eat it for the taste. I don't it's think it's like a ceremonial thing. Yeah, right? it's like and, a ceremonial uh, thing. Like it's like a status stuff, right? thing, yeah. you know. Yeah. For sure. So it's that's God, it you tastes know. so shit. It's yeah. extremely. It's like fugu, right? It's like yeah. puffer fish. It's yeah, just yeah. extremely bland, expensive, and it's purely just to say you've had it. Yeah, it's it's like it's fugu, fugu having having puffer fish, it is not worth. The decades of training you have to go through as a chef to become mm. a fugu chef. And I'm like, are, I you, get your I'm like, are you seriously telling me that? Are you seriously <laughs> telling me that a chef spent ten years to cut this I bitch just, up, and I still have a chance I could die? I just, I just think, when did we ever be like? You know, I mean, 
Salmon is pretty good, eh? <laughs> when did we ever stray away from the normal fish? Who are these fuckers who are making this the, the hype around this? Yeah, like, boys just, get this. Sardines. Yeah, what? pretty good. Who the fuck? Pretty good. Who the fuck is doing this shit with the sharks and the fucking puffer fish? I'm like, just give me a fucking fresh chicken. Fuck, I gotta sneeze. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, fuck. I'm so angry. Yeah, someone, someone was like, you know what? The salt and pepper ain't doing it for me. I need a new spot. Paprika? No. Give me danger or give me suffering. That is the best yes. spot. You literally yeah. pay out the ash just for danger. Yeah. That's literally it. Yeah. Just, just honestly, probably eating like a whole Domino's pizza is more danger to your life than <laughs> the fugu ever was. You know what I mean? Like the cholesterol risk is probably <laughs> yeah. way higher. Yeah. And, and, it, and, and it didn't take the pizza chef 10 years. And it probably took it 10 better. minutes. <laughs> like, I just... I, I, I just don't, like, I, as human beings, we're just so fucking weird. Yeah. Why are we obsessed with this shit? Yeah. Uh. I just don't get it. Yeah, like, I, would, I wouldn't have a problem with eating, like, a weird part of an animal if, if yeah. we also it. used the rest of the and animal. And it wasn't yeah, yeah. cruel. If, if it wasn't if, cruel. If, yeah. if it, you know, if it was killed humanely and stuff yeah. like that. And, you know, if like, we actually make use of the mm. animal. Yeah, mm. that's why, yeah. like, you know, I like how, like, the Japanese use, like, you know, animals like cows or, like, yeah. chickens or, like, fish, for example. I realize the irony of... Because we use every single part of the animal, yeah. right? We don't yeah. let anything go to I realize the irony of being like, fuck intestines. <laughs> 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 okay, okay. Listen, I, I'm not chucking that shit out, you know? Hey, 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 I better to eat it. Listen, yeah. I, I've, I've eaten it before, it's fine. I just wouldn't go to a restaurant, all right? Yeah. Before you fucking tell me double standards. <laughs> I'll eat everything. I just won't be happy about it a lot of the time, all right? Yeah, for sure. And I'm firmly of the mindset of like, I, I'm willing to kill every animal I, I'm willing to eat. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, same here. But also well, it's, it's interesting because the whole the cultural uh, differences, right? Of yeah. like the animals that they're willing to eat. Oh, of course. Like, yeah. Horse. Very uncomfortable to talk about because people don't like talking about how the fact that Jen, uh, Jen Japan, Japan eats a horse. Why you got to do jam like that? <laughs> yeah, it's available in a lot of izakayas. You can yeah, go to a normal fucking bar and you just there's like horse sashimi that you can get. Yeah, like there are izakayas. Oh, but there, yeah, that's yeah. The there, is, there are izakayas like dedicated to horse. Sashimi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very odd. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a very that's one that I find that when I mention it on like stream and people have a really tough time getting over that. One. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, when you hear like shark, you know, that's the silly thing that other people do in other countries. Yeah. Like, horse? What? They're so cute. <laughs> Again, we've spoken about this before. It's all branding. Horses are cute. That's why we, we <laughs> yeah. get sad about it. If sharks were cute, you'd feel sorry no, for them. No, yeah. okay, I think sharks are cute. <laughs> they are. Uh, a, a lot, lot of people don't. Sharks are to be pretty cute. A lot of they people can. don't. I mean, as long, you know, it's... <laughs> They also have bad PR, you know? Fucking Jaws no. brought- like Jaws Bad brought, PR. Like, <laughs> Jaws brought shark PR, like, through the fucking dirt, man. Yo, if, if sharks could sue, yo, fucking Steven Spielberg better be, like, sweating, man. <laughs> he ruined shark images for decades. No, centuries even. It's Jaws does not represent us. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> this yeah. is a stereotype. I will not stand for this. <laughs> There's obviously a great question of, like, well, obviously, Chickens are farmed in like giant things. Like, yeah, I, I, I get that, right? Yeah. But at least I'm not fucking throwing it back in the water and drowning it after it takes its feet. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I yeah, know. I mean, at the end of the day, right? It's like, it's, it's hard to police that shit because it's like, oh, people always yeah. throw it's out like right. the, yeah. the culture, you know, play card. You know, be like, what, well, we've been eating this whole century. Where you can be as picky as you want with when, this and go down any step. You can be like, well, you threw away a b some fries. You didn't eat yeah. them all. Like, yeah. You're so wasteful. You know, fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> I hate you. It's like, where, where do you draw the line then in terms of like, trying like animals. You know, I, I, all I know is that you shouldn't fucking chop a part of the animal off and throw it back in the water and let it die. That's yeah, yeah. I think we can all agree on that. It's, I mean, like, yeah. it's, like, it's like, if I'm gonna eat an animal, I wanna eat and, and I want them to utilize the most, as much of it, as yeah. much of the animal as possible, so yeah. that like there is little to no waste and no suffering and no suffering. Yeah. You know, I, if you want to go deep into that rabbit hole, you can go really deep, yeah. and it's and it, you know the stuff you can see online is horrible. Yeah, um, and that's but, how vegetarians and vegans. Are. But also, but also <laughs> I want to sleep at night. So. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. Well, what a really fun way to end this episode. <laughs> look, at look at us. Look at us, guys. Look at us. Look at uh, us. So yeah. that was fun. Uh, not doing that again. Yeah. And don't eat weird shit if you don't have to. Yeah. Yeah. Don't even be curious. I'm telling you right now, you can yeah. live vicariously like for me. It's yeah. Like shit. And if you come visit Japan, please try other ramen other than Ichiran. Okay. There, I there beg is. of you. It hurts. Yeah. yeah. It hurts when I see a line outside of Ichiran. <laughs> don't do that. What shit. is the one? What is the common uh, ramen chain that uh, people go to in Japan? Uh, like not tourists, like local. Is it Ipudo? Ipudo is pretty good. Ipudo, right. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a lot of them. There's a few on What's the Hana one? That's Udon though, right? 
Uh, Hanamaru Udon. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah, one, yeah. that, that one, one's that nice and cheap. That was cheap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Udon is often super cheap. I can't like, see like 400, shit. 400, 500, 600 yen bowls. Oh, yeah. yeah. Hanamaru Udon, you can, I think you can get one for like 350 yen. Insane value. Yeah. If you want Ridiculous. a really good like, just, meal. Just cheap. Like, Udon and ramen and soba in general, just Ooh. like some of the Anchorage cheapest and also AIB best tasting food you can get in Japan. Yeah. But hey, look at all these patrons, though. Ooh. They eat every part of the animal, I hope. Shout out to the vegetarian and vegan patrons. I cool ranch. Doritos from now on. <laughs> Vegan friendly. <laughs> but uh, hey, if you'd like to support the show, go to our Patreon, patreon.com slash trash taste. Also follow us on Twitter, send us memes on the subreddit, and if you hate our face, listen to us on Spotify. And uh, yeah, Amazing. I guess we'll, we'll see you guys next time. Sorry, yeah. sorry if we get, put any uh, trauma into you nah. in terms of the things we talked about. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you guys next week. Bye. Bye. Descend and maintain 10,000 feet AIB. All right. Very cool, very cool, very cool, very cool. Nice, nice, nice. All right. We are getting closer by the minute. We will be there soon. So you can see we're gonna be coming into Alaska and Anchorage is right there. Hopefully we can get the ILS set up so I don't have to land it and, well, do too much to land it because I don't trust myself in this that's why we use ILS I just need to make sure that we set this up properly I'm gonna use the restroom I'll be right back I'll be just a minute
Oh, I have returned. Okay. We're getting close, chat. We're getting close. Ah, okay. To the people that are just joined, I saw the raid. Thank you very much, Deckel. I really appreciate it. Um, we are flying from Seattle to Anchorage. I'm going to descend to 5,000 if possible. If they Anchorage let us. Center, AIB 3026. Request 5,000 feet. AIB 3026, descend and maintain 5,000 feet. Alright, 5,000. Alright, it'll take two and a half minutes to get down to that. We should make this more interesting. I'm gonna make it evening. AIB tree zero two six, acknowledge last transmission. Yep, 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 yep. Descend and maintain five thousand feet, AIB tree zero two six. There we go. So now we can actually see things. So you guys aren't just watching me use the instruments. It'll be more interesting like this. We're still going to use the ILS and everything. I'm not going to hand fly this in because I don't trust myself with it. I'm not that good at flying. These clouds are beautiful though. Also, you can see a storm up ahead. I'm not too sure where that is, but I don't think we'll be flying into it. Hopefully not. Yeah, I'll set the weather to real time. Why not? We'll still do this. Yeah, there we go. So now we have accurate wind and everything. This is what Alaska looks like right now. Just some scattered clouds. <laughs> Lots of turbulence. That's because we're over the ocean. Look, you can see a boat right there. Behind this pillar here, on the water. That's really cool. Look at those mountains. That's beautiful. Alright, we should be seeing this boat here on this left side right here. It's really neat that you can see it. Mm-mm-mm. <laughs> This game is really fun. It's definitely something you can relax to. There is the boat. See it down there. That's really cool. I like how they have that detail. Considering that this was made with satellite images, that means that that boat was actually there at some point in history, whenever that satellite image was taken. The boats definitely aren't, like, real-time and everything. This boat, I don't think it'll move or anything, but it's cool. Alrighty. really neat. We're passing by the ship. So yeah, we're gonna do a ILS approach. We're gonna need to uh, prepare for that. So yeah, we're gonna be just flying in at 5,000 for a while until we get above land, and that's when we'll start descending to 3,000. 3,000-ish. 3, we'll just wait 
Really fun game though. I'm really enjoying this. I'm definitely gonna play it a lot. I already have 15 hours on this game and this makes 17 hours considering this is a two-ish hour flight. Maybe 18 with three hours. So, yeah, I really enjoy it. We're coming in. This is the hard part. It's the taking off and landing part that makes flying hard. But it should be fine. We should be able to just plug it into the computer and it'll do it for us. No worries. We're definitely getting turbulence. I'm not sure how to fight that. If there is a way. I mean, the computer will do it itself, so we don't have to worry too much. We can speed up a bit, though. I'm going to bring us up to 320. Very fun. Having a great time, chat. Having a great time. I'm not too sure when I'll be streaming tomorrow because I'm going to be out of town uh, for family and all that. But we'll definitely stream. Um, we might play some Nier Automata. Uh, so, yeah. Be on the lookout for that. I'm trying to stream, like, every day now. I'm trying to get back into that pattern, but life has been a bit crazy. I just got my new job, so I'm getting used to that. I've settled into it, and yeah. Holy crap, the turbulence is crazy. It should get better once we're over land. But yeah. This game is beautiful. Being a pilot must be really relaxing at some points. Once you're out of all the ATC stuff, you're just sort of sitting back and watching the scenery. In these planes, where they sort of fly themselves, the smaller planes, you kind of have to hand fly those things the entire time, so. You know. It is nice. At least I'm, I'm relaxed while playing this. see all the land right there. We're getting close. The plane is going to fly itself, so we don't need to really worry about the turbulence. Only rarely does turbulence ever get that bad to where you have to take control. I don't think we're going to run into that, so we should be good. We hit three hours on stream. It's a good three hour stream. Just chilling out, having a good time.
All right. Coming in. buttons VHF There's a lot of stuff we can do Ah, I see. That is the the volume for it. That's cool. So I can turn that down if I need to. I wish I knew that. Pretty cool. We're coming in closer. You can see all the mountains and everything. It's really cool. Turbulence is still bad. It's because we're low and above water, so it happens. We should be a little better once we get over the land. It's still mountainous, but it isn't too bad. Mm-mm-mm. I mean, it's really cool that it's real-time weather, so this is the actual, what the plane would actually act like flying in right now. With the wind. Really cool. Hello, Chris. It goes well. Um, we're, we're flying from Seattle to Alaska, to Anchorage. And we're getting closer. I'm at 5,000 feet right now. Um... Uh, you can see here, we're at the south coast of Alaska coming in right here. It's been about a three hour flight, so we're coming in for the ILS landing. It should be easy if I can set it up properly. check right so yeah that makes sense right Thank you for the hydrate. Uh, 
Okay, I think this is what we need to worry about. Yeah, ILS right here. So we need to get the ILS frequency and uh, all that stuff. Um, so we go to this, this, no, go from this, um, shit, uh, what did I do? Okay, see. Right. Arrival. Okay, approach. ILS, we are expecting... What runway are we expecting? Is it... I have it down here somewhere, I should. I guess not. AIB tree zero two six contact Anchorage Center on one one nine or decimal tree. I guess we'll find out. One one nine or decimal tree AIB tree zero two six. We should be able to ask. Anchorage Center AIB tree zero two six five thousand feet. No worries, Chris. Thank you. AIB tree zero two six Anchorage Center altimeter two nine or decimal eight six continue as planned. Anchorage Center AIB Tree 026 would like to change destination to Anchorage. AIB Tree 026 is cleared to Anchorage Airport as filed. We've already Block got that. 5552. AIB Tree 026 cleared to Anchorage Airport as filed. Squawk 5552. AIB Tree 026 read back, correct. Radar contact, 4,900 feet. Altimeter 29 or decimal 87, turn left, heading 280, climb, and maintain 15,000 feet. Turn left, heading 280, climb, and maintain 15,000 feet, AIB 3026. We need to climb. It's gonna get really turbulent if we don't. All right, so we know how to set up our approach. I need to know what runway to expect though, so we're gonna wait. So yeah, we should be able to set that up though. I sort of know how to do it, so it shouldn't be too difficult. I just need to make sure that I don't mess anything up. Those mountains are beautiful, holy crap. I want to go to Alaska someday. I have land in Alaska. All the way out in uh, Norvik. So I'd like to see it one day. I know there's a house there, but it might not be maintain maintained. We'll look, though. It'd be pretty cool. I fly to Norvik in this game and look at where my uh, great-grandmother was born. Well, she was born in, uh, yeah, she was born in Norvik, and then she moved to, uh, Kiana. But they're right next to each other, so. Could be neat. But yeah, I'm a Lucian Native American, so. This is my homeland.
I think for these streams, what we'll do is basically just follow a path around the world using the airports. Like, next stream we'll do from Anchorage to uh, somewhere in Russia, maybe. And then go down the coast there. Just fly country to country. Why not? Could be neat. So next stream we might do a Anchorage to uh, somewhere in Russia or something, and then go from Russia to Tokyo or something, and then fly around Japan for a bit maybe. We haven't seen any traffic around here for a while. Alaska is not busy. At least not until we get up here to where all the airports are. grand old time chat. We still have 69,000 kilograms of fuel. That's how you know we're getting closer. They're giving us more instructions on how to bring her in. This game is so beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. Oh. AIB tree zero two six. You are six tree miles southeast. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect vectors. Visual runway two five left approach. A visual? I don't want to do visual. AIB tree 026, descend and maintain 6,000 feet. AIB tree 026, descend and maintain 4,800 feet. We're going to slow down because we're getting at the point where they're giving us a lot of instructions. Descend and maintain 4,800 feet. Expect vectors. Visual runway 25. Left approach AIB tree 026. I'll uh, 
less. 2-5 left. Do we have 2-5 left? ILS. We'll do runway 7 left. ILS runway 7 left. ILS runway 7 left approach Echo November Alpha transition. AIB tree 026, you are 55 miles southeast. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect ILS runway 7 left approach via Echo November Alpha transition. Circle to land runway 25 left. Clear to Echo November Alpha. Alrighty. Uh, this is the hard part, chat. This is the hard part. Alright. Cleared to ENA. Alright. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect ILS runway 7 left approach via Echo November Alpha transition circle to land runway 25 left. Cleared to Echo November Alpha AIB 3026. All right. Anchorage Center AIB tree zero two six would prefer runway seven left. AIB tree zero two six, you are four eight miles southeast. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect ILS runway 7 left approach via Echo November Alpha transition. Clear to Echo November Alpha. Okay. We should be able to see this. Alright, we are good. Okay, so we should be able to see some diamonds appear once we get close enough. We have to be careful. Maintain present heading and altitude. Expect ILS runway 7 left approach via Echo November Alpha transition. Clear to Echo November Alpha AI. There's a highway right there. That's neat. I bet that would be insane to drive down. That would look crazy. Alright, we are coming in for our ILS approach. This is gonna get choppy. Oh boy. Are we supposed to get down this low? They told us to, but there's a lot of mountains right here. I guess it's okay. Giant eight one two, contact Anchorage Center on one one nine decimal tree. Good day. Going to one one nine er decimal tree. Giant eight one two. All right. Well, we're st we're staying on the localizer. Um, we'll just keep going. If we run into issues, I'll automatically just I'll manually just bring us up just in case. We should be good though. We are getting really low though. Are we gonna have clearance when we get around here? I'm going to set us to 1,000 feet per minute. I'm gonna make sure that we don't hit anything. This is really beautiful, but holy shit, I can't see anything. I'm gonna level us for right now. AIB tree zero two six, contact Anchorage approach on one two tree decimal eight. Good day. 
going to 123 decimal 8 AIB 3026. Anchorage Approach AIB 3026 is passing 6,500 feet, descending 4,800 feet. AIB 3026 Anchorage Approach Altimeter 30 decimal 05. Continue to echo November Alpha as planned. Okay. There is a lot of mountains right here. I definitely do not want to get that low yet. I'll get that low once we come into view of the airport. This game is really fucking beautiful. Holy hell. <laughs> Very nice. You really want me to get down that low? Okay. We'll go at 500 feet per minute. If they don't like that, then we'll go lower. There's mountains right here, though. I don't know if they want us to go to slow right here. 2,500. I'm going to change our heading. I'm going to go 270. We're going to go around on the left side right here. 2,500. AIB tree 026. Please expedite your descent. I can't right here. There we go. We're getting into a clearing. We're going to go around these mountains. I'm not going to fly over these. <laughs> All right, coming in close. Oh boy. Ain't that fun, chat? Ain't that fun? See, yeah, we're way too low. There's no way we could fly over those mountains right here. Those mountains are really close. We're going to fly around. See, so, yeah, we're going to come in right here. over to right here while we do this. Yeah, I like this. Alright, we're coming in. This is where things get crazy. So yeah, I think it's, it's thinking that we're coming in on the approach over here, so it's making us get lower than we have to because we cannot get that low right here. So we're going around. We're gonna follow this waterway until we get to the uh, vector over there. We'll head on 250 for this. All right, we should be good, chat. We should be good. We're gonna bring this in nice and smooth. 
no issues. We're gonna let the computer do the work. Mountain impacted the landings. Airport near near Rent's house has hills, and I've had pilots tell me that the landing is kind of a pain. Yeah, it really depends on the area. I know that the uh, airport in Hong Kong, you have to go like right over buildings to land there, and it's like super scary, <laughs> and it's a pain. There's another airport. That's not the one we're landing at, but yeah. We have to continue this way, and then we have to turn. Alrighty. This is the fun part. looks great we're doing good we just have to keep the altitude for right now we don't have to worry about our uh, compass until we get close to the runway we're gonna do a right turn once we start coming in for seven left we do not need to worry about that though we're gonna turn to 270 right so we should be turning up and we're gonna go up this coast so yeah, you can see this is our path right here. Alrighty, we're gonna do this like a professional, all right? <laughs> We've got this. Nice. Oh. This should be easy. We've got this. Two ninety. Look at that land. It's really cool. This whole area is frozen over, so it looks like snow. Gosh, that's cool. <laughs> we have a de icing and everything on just in case. So, yeah, we've got all that. We definitely don't need that on. We have wipers as well, but we don't have any rain, so we don't need to worry. Scourge your proper laminar flow. Yeah, snow will fuck you up. It'll kill you. <laughs> it's why, uh, it's why that one plane that took off it crashed into that bridge. I forget where that is, but it's a pretty famous uh, crash. It took off in like literally like two minutes after taking off. It crashed into a bridge because it had uh, snow on the on the wings. the The icing wasn't working. AIB tree zero two six descend and maintain two thousand feet. Descend and maintain two thousand feet. AIB tree zero two six. AIB tree zero two six. Descend and maintain 2,300 feet.
Descend and maintain 2,300 feet AIB 3026. All right, we're getting really low. It's probably because we're coming in in the middle of the ILS. We're gonna be turning right into it. So, it should be good. Once it captures the glide slope, we shouldn't have to really worry. I say shouldn't, but you know, I can't do much about that. I don't know what this expedite button does, so I'm going to not touch it. <laughs> Bird strike hazards? No, but it does include uh, engine failures and all that. I don't think I have any of that on. I think we're just flying normal. But if we want to turn on like wear and all that, we can. I don't play with crash settings because, you know, I'd much rather just, you know, enjoy the flight. And plus, I'm not doing anything that's too harmful anyways. Flare is always stressful on landing. It's not too bad. You just need to uh, know as soon as you hear retard, you uh, pull back and then cut engines. And that's pretty much just all you have to do for flare. You're not going for IFR. I know, I'm going for ILS. I should just cancel this. Cancel IFR at this time. AIB 3026 IFR flight plan is canceled radar service terminated. Squawk 1200. Maintain VFR. Frequency change approved. Good day. Anchorage Approach AIB 3026 is tight Airbus A20 and 7 miles east of Papa Alpha Bravo Golf, 2,400 feet. Request clearance to transition Charlie airspace. AIB 3026 Anchorage Approach. Squawk 0573. Squawk 0573 AIB 3026. AIB 3026 radar contact 5 miles east of Papa Alpha Bravo Golf, 2,500 feet. Clear to the Charlie airspace. Maintain all navigation. Alright, there we go. We are ready. Clear through the Charlie airspace, AIB 3026. Alright, we are going to be turning. just continue this long long turn we want to go about 20 degrees and then turn into it we're definitely low enough to where we don't really need the descend anymore we'll just have to catch the glide slope here so yeah we should be going in about 110 here We'll just line ourselves up with this. We have time. Just taking a long Alaska turn. Alaska 141, contact Anchorage Center on one tree tree, decimal seven. Good day. Anchorage Approach Ace Air 45 is passing 6,600 feet, climbing 9,000 feet. Ace Air 45 Anchorage Approach Altimeter Tree Zero, Decimal 12, continue to CLAAM as planned. One Tree Tree, Decimal 7, for Alaska 141. Anchorage approach AIB 3026, 2,300 feet. AIB 3026, Anchorage approach altimeter tree zero, decimal one tree continue as planned.
Anchorage Approach Alaska 141 is passing 9,800 feet, descending 3,000 feet. Alaska 141 Anchorage Approach Altimeter Tree Zero Decimal 1 Tree. Continue to Tango Echo Delta as planned. I'm gonna bring us down to the to here. Alaska 141, contact Anchorage Center on One Tree Tree, Decimal 7. Good day. Okay, we're lining up right here. We should be able to click on one the localizer tree, here. For Alaska 141. All right. You guys ready for this? This is going to be uh, the Alaska hard part. Alright, we got localizer. So we don't have to touch that now. We're going to be lining in. We're going to line up with it. And the plane's going to bring us in. All right. This is where shit gets real. All right. Oh, boy. This is going to be fun. So, yeah, we should be turning right to line up with the ILS approach, as we are. We are doing that. Lining up with ink. So yeah, approach mode is on now. All right, we're going to set the auto break to medium. We are going to arm our speed brake. It is already armed. We don't need to touch that. Considering we are coming into here, we should be able to drop our gear now. Alrighty. We are doing good. We're going to drop our flaps. Down to 150 knots. Second level of flaps. Third level of flaps. We are good. We're coming in. All right. Doing good, we're doing good. All right, so yeah, as soon as we come into the uh, glide slope, this alt right here will automatically Alaska bring us in. So it should be good. I'm going to turn this down as we do this. All righty. Oh boy, here we go. This is going to be fun. So yeah. We should be following in. It looks good. You can see this uh, green line right here. We are tilted a little to the left because we have a crosswind. So that's why it doesn't look like we're lined up with the line, but we're good. The computer has got us under control. So as soon as I take off the autopilot, I'm going to have to fight the wind and make sure that we pull back for this. 
Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Alright, you can see the runways now. Gonna bring the flaps back again. We're going to drop down to 130. Step on the ball and watch that crosswind. Yep. Yeah. Let's go. We're coming in nice and smooth. You couldn't ask for better conditions for this. Oh, yeah. One tree tree, decimal seven for Ace Air Force Five. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We're coming in nice and steady. Nice and steady. Gotta kiss it. Alright, glide slope is green. That means we're coming in with the glide slope. The plane is now going to do this automatically. So we don't have to worry about this at all. Let's make this a little easier. We're gonna bring this down to 120. Slower down. So yeah, now we're starting to tilt. You can see it tilting and making sure that we are already nose up for this. Look at that, that's so cool. So the poppy lights, two white, two red, we are on target, we are perfect. This is perfect, we've got this. All right. 1,000. So yeah, we gotta get ready for this. Alrighty, chat. This is the this is the fun part. We're coming in. Should be approaching five hundred now. Five hundred. Four hundred. Four hundred. Three hundred. Hello, Quest. One hundred. Sixty, fifty, forty, thirty, twenty. Retard. Five. We are breaking, we are breaking. Oh, yeah. All right, that wind definitely tried to fight us right there. That is perfect. Perfect. I didn't even have the seatbelt lights on. Whoopsies. <laughs> it's okay. Alright, we are ready for taxi. Let's make sure that we take our landing lights off. We don't need them. Runway turn lights are on. Strobes, beacons. Uh, we do not need the strobes. Alright. Here we go. Look at how center line that is. That is perfect. Oh my god. Pro pilot, am I right? 
Like, you can see the wind still pushing us. That's really cool. Alright, so... Gate in two. So we're just gonna follow this here. This is all the way to the gates. We still got six and a half thousand kilograms of fuel on board. Oh, oh yeah, this game is brilliant. I love this. <laughs> yeah, that was a perfect landing. I'm really proud of that. The ILS setup is the thing that worries me the most, so I'm glad I managed to do it. Okay, so we're finding K, and then E, and then E3. So, we got on A, and we, this should be K right here, going down this road. Then we should see E, and then E3 along the way. I'm pretty sure. I wish they gave us an airport map in this game. We have this, and that's about it. Let's see. What is that right there? Let's see, there's K. So yeah, this is K down the stretch. That is C, so we want E. So yeah, that is C to the left. So we're going down more, and then we should see E, and then we turn left and cross runway. So we're taxiing to gate into right. Got some speed going. Zooming. Alright, that should be D. Yep, and then the next turn off on the left is the one we want. So yeah, that's how you taxi. Need to make sure we stay on the road at least, though. The wind is still blowing us, so... It doesn't ever stop. Is it this direction to... Maybe not. Are we able to turn that way? Yeah. Okay. I see. Can we get ground services to turn us? No, they won't. Alright. We need the turn around. I'm going to do a tactical maneuver. This is what we call a Californian 180.
Alright, we're doing good. We're fine. Don't worry, chat. This is legit. Pilots do this all the time, I assure you. <laughs> Alright, yeah, we go this way. So those are the gates over there, I'm pretty sure. I say I'm pretty sure because I don't know the airport, so... Right. So yeah, that should say E. Yep. So we want E3, so we're gonna keep going up until the third turn off on the right, it should be. We're gonna slow down here. Okay, that should be E2 on our right, right there. for gate N2. There's not many signs here, so I have no clue where we're supposed to go. See, that says E. And let me, you got them earlier on the flight. Stop complaining. Gosh. No respect for the pilots. <laughs> this is parking. We need to turn around. Okay, we're gonna turn this way. Do a 180. Maybe that turn off right there was where we're supposed to go. It didn't say, it said E1. There was no E2 or E3 marking, so maybe we turn down E1 and then there's E3 off that. This is why they need to give us maps for these places, because I have no clue where I'm supposed to go. In flight movie? Yeah, there was an actual in flight movie. It was trash taste. <laughs> Okay, what does that sign say right there? Okay. That's M. We're not going to turn that way. So we should continue down here and then turn left. I think. Right. All right. you see any lettering or numbering on these gates right here? It said N2. Maybe that's N2. I have no clue. They didn't tell us. Wait, that says C. C7, C6. Alright, so... Give me a second. I'm gonna look this up. I'm gonna look up the charts for Anchorage. <laughs> and I'm gonna figure out where it is. 
Anchorage Airport chart. Let me find the taxi chart for this. Okay. I know where we're at now. North Terminal. This is South Terminal. Show me the North Terminal, please, so I know where to park. Okay, so we're looking for North Terminal, I think. Yes, we are looking for the North Terminal. Which should be C six six seven. Right there. So we need to go on the other side of that. So we actually need to do a three sixty again. But I know where we need to go now. Another California one eighty. You don't need to worry, chat. I'm gonna get you to where you need to go. I know which gate we need to go to. It's N two. Which means it is directly behind us. And it's the one that's right here. This one right here. So this should be N2. See, uh, there it is, the marking right there. So we don't have an actual gate. They're just going to make us park, like, right here. I guess that's our gate. So we just park up in this tarmac area. Alright, 
there we go. We are here. Let's turn off all of the lights. Please. There we go. Alright. There we go. Everything is good. We can turn off the anti-ice. We should turn off the engines now. Okay, and we are good. Okay. I guess it wants us to turn off something. What does it want us to turn off? Right, APU can stay on. We don't need to do that. Where is our battery? I'm pretty sure that's what it wants us to turn off. Oh, uh, I can turn the flaps back up, by the way. There we go. All that is good. Um, Anchorage ground AIV-3026. Could you please connect the jetway to the aircraft? AIV-3026, we can't connect the jetway to the aircraft. Please retry later. Am I not close enough to it? Oh well. Where is the battery? I know it's up here. I don't know what the flaps are doing. They're going crazy. Where in the world is the battery at? Am I looking in the wrong place? Uh, forward dash somewhere. Auto brake is fine. We don't need to touch that. It's front dash. There's anti skid. I don't need to worry about that. Is there panel lights? Top part. This is our autopilot controls. I don't think it's up here. These are landing gears. Anti-skid. Don't need to touch that. More brightness settings. It's probably somewhere right here. Ah, right here. There we go. Alrighty. So our total time was three hours, 20 minutes. I think that is, yeah, three hours, 23 minutes and 34 seconds. That is a good flight. Yes. Very good. 
We went all the way from Seattle, took off, and then landed in Anchorage without any assistance. We just used the ILS. That is great. Alrighty. Alright. Let's see here. There we go. Alrighty. Okay, chat. Ugh, I'm going to wrap up stream. It was a good four hour stream. Amazing. Um, I'm going to be doing more flights like this. Next flight, we're going to take off from Anchorage and then land somewhere. Maybe in Russia or Japan. We'll see. Not too sure yet, but yeah, that's been all. Um, if you are interested in anything else from me, then check out my YouTube and everything. I upload all my VODs there. Um, in any case, that's been all. Have a good morning, day, or night, whatever it may be. And yeah. Janna! Mwah!